into this, but they got the CIT program off the ground by helping us get money from the state for three years in a row. And I, it's much appreciated because we're here today as a result of getting some seed money from the state several years ago. Thank you. I don't want to stop here. The lady at the podium, she has been so passionate in terms of dealing with our youth and so much of an active member in leadership for the CIT and the personal hours and efforts that she made on her second attempt to win this. So thank you, Amy. Thank you. This is the biggest team win. I'm, I'm so excited. Any other? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, sorry, Michael. I echo your, your sentiments. And Amy was certainly the driving force behind this. I think her persistence. Um, you know, this was not an easy hurdle because of the statistics from operating has. It was very difficult to produce, number one. Um, not that the, there are statistics, but they were asking for statistics we never tracked. So we had to go back to the drawing board and start um, from the fire departments, the schools, to, to the health department. So many people added to this, but it was Amy leadership that got us over the hump, and there were many days in my office where we were both looking at each other and saying, you know what, this may be our only shot, um, but she never, never stopped going forward. So I do appreciate that, and, and certainly we would not have done this without her. Um, but I do want to say that this, this grant is going to fill a significant void um, that we have right now that we just don't have the resources to do. So providing these resources, getting a professional, <coughs> trained person to specifically deal with the educational prevention part of it, um, it's invaluable to our community. And when we started this community impact team almost five years ago, this type of impact is exactly what we were looking for. Everybody coordinating their efforts, pulling in the same direction. And you know, to see this now, uh, you know, like some of the founding members would say is this is exactly why we did what we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, time will tell how what it kind of an impact it has, but it's certainly not going to hurt. And so anything at this point going forward is, is going to be positive. Okay. Okay. Wants to run off that podium right Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone in the audience want to have any questions or comments? Maybe Senator Tarr. I know he doesn't usually have much to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it is important. The state programs uh, certainly with a catalyst. So. I'll go with Well, unaccustomed to public speaking as I am, <laughs> uh, I, I just would, would offer you a, a couple of thoughts. Number one, congratulations to everybody that's in, been involved in this effort. Amy, fantastic job. But I think it's an emblematic of your leadership that everyone has wanted to be involved in this. And you've woven them into a team that is really making a difference, not just in convincing the federal government to give us a substantial amount of money, but also impacting every segment of the community so that everybody feels like they're a part of this. And that is an enormous challenge that you have met. Because when you get together for something like this, you want to make sure that no one feels like they're outside of the circle of community. And the entire community impact team effort has made sure that everyone feels like they're inside that circle. So that's point number one. Point number two is to thank the Board of Selectmen and the administrator and his predecessor for making sure that the town made this a priority and gave it the kind of support that it needed from early on. Because when we all first gathered, and I remember some early morning meetings over at the library with some wonderful donuts that I shouldn't have been eating and some great coffee, we all thought about the fact that this was really a vision for the future that started from absolutely nothing and has been built into a tremendously impactful program. So I think that's an important thing. Third, I just want to say how much of what you've done has been important to Representative Jones and I to be able to tell our colleagues that if you make a state investment in this, as we have over several years, 
that it will yield a benefit in creating a model that can be used in other places and can make a real difference. And we hinted in some of those debates at the fact that it would also leverage additional resources. And that mission is now complete as well. And we can say that a very modest amount of state funding, which we're very pleased to work to secure, has leveraged a tremendous amount of support from the federal government. And then lastly, I would just say thanks to everyone in the community. The events that you hold are well attended. People engage in the discussions that go on, in the projects that take place. It is really a testament to the fact that in an era when so many things compete for our attention, that a few people can get together and create an infrastructure that makes everyone part of the effort. And everyone in this town should be very proud of the support that they've given to this, not only by supporting it at town meeting, but also by being involved in all of the different efforts that have gone on. So thanks to everyone that's been involved. Steve, thanks for inviting me to share a few thoughts. That was probably much more of an answer than you <laughs> wanted. Um, but it, it's a real honor to be part of this and, and to be associated with it in any way. So thanks to everyone on the project. Great job. Thanks for making Thank the time. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, just because Senator Tarr is here, uh, I'll, I'll be providing an update to the board later on in the meeting with regard to a MassWorks grant application that we filed for state funding to assist with our MWRA project. And I just want to recognize that Senator Tarr provided us a letter of support to advocate to Secretary Ash in support of our application. I just want to say thank you, mm -hmm. Senator, for a quick turnaround on that. And we have only begun the fight. Excellent. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for making the time, Senator. Okay, we have the uh, next item on our ag uh, agenda is to accept some gifts. We'll start with the library gift. <coughs> this is a Gordon D. Investor donation. It's the Gordon oh, Ivester. 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 It what? should be Ivester. It should be Ivester. Yes. You're not an investor. Well, you made an investment. You made an investment. <laughs> made an investment it's Ivester. That's Ivester. Ivester. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Chairman, you have someone at the podium. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Good evening. Hi, I'm Marcy Bailey, and I'm here tonight in my capacity as chairman of the Flint Memorial Library Board of Trustees. Um, we're so glad tonight here to bring you more, even more good news. Um, the Flint Memorial Library is the proud, privileged, and honored recipient of a gift from the estate of Gordon, Gordon Ivester, an avid reader and user of the Flint Memorial Library. Um, and I would like to introduce to you Dean Van Norden, Mr. Ivester's nephew. He has worked very hard with our library director, Sharon Kelleher, to develop a vision for the gift, which will be to allow us to have an author series and bring authors to the community to appeal to a wide range of residents and patrons in the community. And it's really um, a gift of over $10,000 and will afford us an opportunity, I dare say the library's never had before, to do some really exciting programming. So I know you have a long agenda this evening and I'd like to introduce Mr. Van Norden just to say a few brief words about the gift. Thank you. Mr. Van Norden. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening to the board and the citizens of North Reading. Of course, my name is Dean Van Norden. My uncle, Gordon Ivester, was a resident of North Reading for 58 years, before his passing last year. He was a proud World War II veteran and a very charitable person. He loved his town and wanted to give back to the community. He was an avid reader, and he has given a gift, as been said, to the Flint Memorial Library. Working with Sharon over the summer, uh, and with her help, we were able to put together and it's the Gordon Iverster author series plus any other funds beyond that to be used to the li for the library. Um, so working with Sharon, I know my uncle will be very pleased that this donation will help enhance many people in the community. Sincerely, Dean Van Norden, trustee of the Gordon D. Iverster Trust. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Mrs. Manapelli, I believe we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept a gift in the amount of $10,634.15 from the Gordon D. Ivester Trust for the Gordon Ivester Author Series at Flint Memorial Library. Do second. I have a second? Oh. Second. Second, Mr. Yule. Any further discussion? Just thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just thank you very much. Just thank you very much. Thank you very much. And much uh, appreciated. And I'm sure the library will put the uh, money to good use. They really do a good job. <laughs> a really good job. Right. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. We have another gift. Always when it's accepting money, right? <laughs> yes. This is to the schools from Douglas and Mary. Carrie, that's a fence donation. Uh, the Carrie's here this evening. No. No? Okay. Anyone from the school department here? They've, they've already signed off on it. They've already signed off? Yeah, they already approved it. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm happy to speak to, to the matter. Um, Please do. So over the past um, six weeks, I've been working with the superintendent of schools relative to a request that came up and I think was initially before the secondary school building committee at the beginning of the summer and that is uh, from uh, the Careys uh, who uh, abut the middle high school complex um, they desired to construct at their own expense a fence um, to uh, provide some privacy to their property which again abuts the, uh, the property it's the area towards the rear near the tennis courts if you're familiar with the site and after some discussions with town council, the superintendent engaged in conversations with uh, the carries and ultimately with the school committee and identified this is the best course uh, to, uh, to address the issue where they are effectively are, are granting a, a gift to the town uh, of a fence to be constructed in the area near their property to provide that uh, privacy that they seek. Um, it effectively provides a, a license for the fence to be constructed. Uh, the fence would become town of North Reading property once constructed they would not have an interest in the land on which the fence is located nor would they have ownership of the land between their property line and the fence it would be located uh, just over the, the border uh, in an area where construction may be a bit easier without the need to eliminate to, to uh, remove any additional trees um, from from that spot um, we do not have an ob obligation to maintain the fence um, but it, it does provide the right for them to construct it it was approved by the school committee I think two weeks ago uh, at one of their regular meetings and uh, because uh, the fact that it is a license for the use of town land to come back to the selectmen for approval and I'd be recommending approval okay with that uh, Mrs. Manapelli we have a motion so, uh, Jeff has a question I, I did have a question oh uh, I'm we sorry can wait for the motion right you can for the discussion six, right? six foot tall black chain right. link fence with mm -hmm. yeah I, I guess the question that i had and, and i want to thank uh, uh douglas and mary carry for for the donation i think it's um always appreciated and i think the intentions are always always very good uh but it, something was said there that they said that the the fence will be built but uh it'll not be on the property of the of uh Douglas and, and Mary uh, won't be on their property, but the main uh, the town is not obligated to maintain it. <coughs> it seems like it's a fence that's in, in limbo that um, would, would if the town is not responsible for repairing it, then and it starts to become a problem uh, and it starts to break down or what have you over the years. Um, who would pay for the repair? I, I guess that's that's a concern that I have, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, first of all, I think it needs to be put in the proper context here. You know, the, the carries are direct about us to the, to right. the high school middle school project, and uh, for several months, maybe even a couple of years, uh, they have been requesting some sort of screening and fencing uh, along their property line in order to assist them with um, people who are trespassing going right. through their property. All of uh, and those types of situations again and they are certainly not alone with uh, direct abutters to this uh, complex who have issues and who have had issues from day one in relation to uh, screening and buffering uh, from the complex uh, they found it to be in their best interest to to erect a fence but in order to erect a fence on their own property that would require them to take down additional trees mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like so that with the proposed was and what they're proposing here is to 
uh, allow them to erect a fence on town property uh, just so that the natural buffer would be protected and then uh, turn it over to the town. Uh, some of the concern I think was, you know, well, okay, if we agree to accept the fence, now do they have to, does the town have to maintain, it. maintain the fence as a matter of obligation? Uh, it could be a matter of choice and they may choose to do so at a later, later date. But, um, but through the agreement, the town will be accepting it, graciously accepting it, but not necessarily obligating itself to maintaining the fence down the road if something else comes up. So uh, again, this is more um, for their own, some would say, self-interest in relation to buffering their property and trespassers. Uh, and it's an unfortunate set of circumstances, as I said, that a, a lot of um, director butters are experiencing. You know, so when we talk about you know the impact that this has had, you know, in a community as a whole, it's been a wonderful thing. But for the director butters, for some of the director butters, it's been rather rather intrusive and. Uh, uh, had uh, what they would consider to be a, a change in, in lifestyle and uh, environment. And so therefore, this is what's been worked out as far as the agreement between the carries and the school department and the town. And you know, I would recommend it because you know, they're offering to do it, but it's unfortunate you know, that uh, these abutters have had to find it themselves to have to put out $6,500 in order to uh, get some sort of uh, satisfactory screening uh, from the project. But unfortunately, again, it's been an ongoing problem uh, with a number of the abutters, and there just isn't uh, enough resources within the budget to uh, address and satisfy uh, some of the abutters. Well, I, 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 if I may, Mr. see you. Yeah, um, uh, I, I understand. You know what, what you're describing there. Uh, I, I think that the um, it is unfortunate that the abutters have to expend, you know. Uh, expenses and uh, a cost for doing this and yes it's very uh, was this done through the SSBC or? It, it was initially proposed to the SSBC for us to erect a fence right. they were informed that there are yeah. no resources to do it and that uh, then they came back and proposed that they would pay for the fence right. they were then referred to the school department basically saying it's not an SSBC matter it's basically school property school department right. property go to the school committee uh, go that venue and then have to come to the board because it's I, I, I think that whole, that whole thing is, is a very unfortunate thing mm -hmm. uh, considering all the money that we spent on the school um, and what uh, the abutters had to go through to live with the this I would consider an inconvenience for them I, I appreciate them stepping forward uh, but I, if I look in the future eventually the house will be sold and there will be this fence there and it will become dilapidated. And then they will say, well, it's not our fence, so they want the school to fix it. And the school will say, well, there's not enough money to fix the fence. So you know, you can go through this whole scenario. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, for future homeowners, that, that, that could be a problem you know, for them. Uh, so um, you know, they're in a spot, and it's unfortunate. They're in a spot because they want their privacy, and this new structure, the new school, beautiful school, um, basically has put them at risk in, in, in that regard. So um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that's the, the best uh, solution to the problem. Uh, it's the best you know. solution for the carries in their estimation, and the, and the school committee is not opposed to. Right. But it's not a good solution it. down the road. I guess that's. that's my, my, my concern is, um, you know. Mr. Pelly. I, I don't think it's saying we're not going to maintain it. It's, it's, we're not binding ourselves to a certain level of maintenance by accepting a gift. It doesn't mean to say we're not going to take care of our property. But we wouldn't say, okay, you're going to gift us this and we're going to, you know, hold ourselves to a certain standard of maintenance because of your gift. We're just saying thank you for the gift. We're accepting your gift but we're not going to bind ourselves. But clearly, we take, we should be taking care of our property. So, you know, we can presume we're not going to let it get dilapidated and it would be the, on the school property and it'd be required to be maintained. But through this, we're not saying, you know, that we're going to keep it at a, at a certain level. We're just saying 
thank you for the gift. We accept the gift, and you can build it, and you can build it two to three feet away from your property line. Yeah. And we well, have to say that because it would be <coughs> on our property line, and if well, it fits both purposes. I, I, I mean, I, I do understand that, uh, and, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm empathetic to that. On, yeah. I mean, I, yes. I am. Um, it, but there's, you know, you have a, there's a, a another scenario regarding uh, uh, another property owner where they're having problems with, uh, as a result of, and I'm not going to get into the details of that, but having a problem with the, uh, uh, what the school has done that's uh, impacting their, their property. Now, this fence might be out of sight, out of mind. And, uh, you know, if the school can't see it, then they may not worry about it. And if the, someone complains about it, you know, they may come to the resolution that you know, we really don't have time for that. We don't have the money for that. And that, that's a concern that I have down the road. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, fences don't last forever, I guess. Is, and, and they do come, uh, they do corrode and dilapidate and, and so on. And uh, if I, I mean, I have no idea if that fence can be seen from their property, to be honest with you. I'm assuming that they can be. But um, again, when they sell the house and they're a new property owner, you know, the big question is, oh, I'm glad that fence is there. And then, then now we've got to, but that fence is becoming dilapidated, dilapidated down the road. Um, yeah, part of the agreement is that they have to provide it to any future purchases of a property. Disclose it. Disclose this agreement. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. But, okay. Which would alert them to okay. any concern. Okay. And the All right. School, just, the school, the school committee unanimously by, you know, signed it. I, oh, it settles yeah. one portion in your mind, but not the whole right. portion that needs mm -hmm. to be addressed. Right. It's unfortunate that they made this donation uh, out of duress. I mean, that's, you know, they, they needed to find a solution, and they made a, don a donation under those circumstances. Uh, versus some of the other donations that we received that are <coughs> more, for more benevolent reasons. This was at a need, at a necessity. So that's it. Further discussion on the motion. Uh, we uh, need the motion, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to accept a gift from Douglas and Mary Carey of materials and installation for a fence to be installed on the middle high school property. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. I think we had enough discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Vote is four to one. Mr. Yule opposing. Loyal Order of the Moose, they're asking to uh, extend their Sunday license That's to, be, to conform with what I believe the board has approved previously. Members of the Moose here? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, do, do you have a recommendation? Yeah, that's correct. Um, <coughs> we have a, uh, members of the uh, of the Moose have approached the town with regard to a desire to extend their pouring hours to begin at 10 a.m. instead of at noon time, um, as they currently exist. My understanding is that the town meeting has established uh, has accepted the statute under Chapter 138, Section 33 and 33B relative to allowing this to take place uh, a couple of years ago, um, and uh, we would recommend uh, approval of the uh, change of hours. I believe there's a motion as such that's in the packet. I would, I Do we have a motion? I, I would move to continue until a uh, member of the, you know, the manager or the licensee appears to talk to the board about it. Mr. Yule. Yes. Um, I think this is just uh, what we have Sorry. been uh, did, what is it, last December did we address uh, uh, the change in, uh, first of all, the state allowed us to uh, move the time to 10 o'clock or to a preferred time that we'd like, and I think we chose 10 o'clock in the morning as a board, and then I, uh, all they had, all the, um, those who wished to have the hours extended to 10 a.m., all they had to do was submit a request like this. So I think that's pretty much all it is. It's just a, it, there's no, um, nothing different than, than what everybody else has done. They just submitted it. No one, the others didn't come before us to some have some the. Yes, some did. Some did, but not everybody did. But we approved everybody that 
is in writing, as far as I know, anyway. I, I think that, through you, Mr. Chairman, that the, the reference may be to the package store license being able to sell before a new time, not uh, fraternal uh, or on-premise pouring licenses. Um, there were two separate statutory changes that took place, mm -hmm. one of which was for for a sale uh, for consumption off the premises, which right. a couple of establishments came to us and asked to extend their hours to er before noon time. Um, for on premise, um, uh, I'm not aware that we contacted in the way that we did for the off premises, but I, I can't speak to it firsthand because it happened prior to my uh, my arrival here. Um, my understanding, their request is related to them wanting to run some Sunday brunches. It, they, they do run totally a brunch, yeah. yes. Yeah. That, that's all. It's just a, so they can have bunches. They and they don't <coughs> do it often. They, they every once in a while they, they have a bunch. They're not they're not a retail. They're not a restaurant. It's a, it's a it's the loyal loyal order of the moose, which is a private a organization, right. rights club. So you don't have in these petitions. You don't have a, a hearing on them. A, a, a hearing where the applicant appears and explains the basis for it. Or? So is that the I don't think we did when, when we moved over to uh, when, the, when the law c became into effect. The law is the law, but the law says the, the board has to make the decision. Right. Right? Right. By a peti through a petition, which does not warrant a hearing? Doesn't the petitioner have to appear at a hearing? Through you, Mr. Chairman, there's no notification requirement for uh, this type of transaction pursuant to uh, our discussion with the ABCC. Uh, the board's willingness to approve of the of the change of hours without representation is at the board's discretion, right. obviously. I didn't know that that's what you did. Okay. And, and as, as I recall, all we did was say, you know, let, for those establishments, just to let us know whether they, we accepted the, the time, extended hours, and all they all we wanted the establishments to do was to let us know whether they wished to extend their hours. And we didn't have a hearing on all I, that. Okay. I don't recall, anyway. We would have had a, a similar, through you, Mr. Chairman, a similar type action. The board would have had to have approved the change of hours. Oh, of course, yeah, it has to be approved. I but there's no notice requirement, and Jane has reminded me that uh, we simply notify the ABCC. They don't actually approve okay. on it. We just provide notice to uh, them that it's been approved by the local licensing uh, authority. And you obviously yeah. know this applicant and know the assert, all the qualified I, I, I do. manager okay. and all that stuff. So. Okay, then I'd withdraw that. Okay. Request to continue it until well, then. I will appears. entertain a motion um, to approve the request. Just to your point, though, generally speaking, the applicant does come in and say, "This is what we're doing and why we want to do it." But right. Were you expecting them this evening? I don't. I don't um, know that we were. No. no. Okay. Um, and I'm not aware that we instructed them to be here either. In their defense. That was going to be my next question. Okay. Thank you. Motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to modify the fraternal club license of the Loyal Order of Moose by changing the serving hours on Sundays to 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. From 1 a.m. Second. No, it's oh, 10 no, a.m. to 1 a.m. the next. And oh, 1 a.m. Okay, sorry. I did second there. You'll hear a second. Sure. Is, is, that a, is that an extension related on the uh, on the tail end of things, or is that the same? The beginning, I believe. Just right. the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It's the 10 a.m. They were 11 a.m. Anyway, okay. Yes. Yeah. On the motion, all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. <laughs> I, I did have a question about Can I say you. unanimous? Yes, you can say unanimous. Okay. I was just... <laughs> but I, I, I was trying to wait for you to say any further discussion. discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we so. just had the discussion. Well, I, I did have a question about I'm sorry. The, the document itself. Uh, about um, the document itself will show that uh, you can do service of alcohol Monday through Friday, and then you can serve on Sunday. But there's no mention of Saturday. There was some curiosity on that. I believe the, it's a, the, the it says weekdays actually. It says weekdays. It doesn't say. I believe the clerk has the document in front of her. Yeah, it says from 8 a.m. Uh, it says bev alcoholic beverages may be sold from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. weekdays mm -hmm. except Sunday, right. which is 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Right. Last call, 12.40 a.m. All glasses off tables, right. 1 a.m. So I guess I always thought weekdays. Friday, weekdays except Sunday. Sunday. So that means all, all the rest. All in the week, I guess. All but <laughs> okay, the moving right along uh, we have a joint meeting with the CPC Chris have you called your meeting to order 
Warren. Be Warren. That'd be Warren. Warren is the chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Warren. Oh, guys, I've changed this year. Yes. Warren, have you called the uh, committee to order? Um, I will. Okay. Who's driving the bus? I'd like to say a few words and uh, okay. introduce um, Mr. DeCoste. Okay. We have everybody a chance to settle in their seats. Shut it off. The bulb's still warm. It takes a long time. All right. Uh, while we're getting the uh, video squared away, Michael. I want to thank the, the CPC for joining us this evening. Uh, just to update the community on um, why we're having this joint meeting this evening. Uh, and I'll go all the way back to June Town meeting where we presented sort of a timeline on the reuse project that we're going through for 104 and 102 Lowell Road, the old JT Berry property. At October, at June Town meeting, we said the next step after that um, approval of the money to acquire the property and to take the action to go and reuse the property was that we we're gonna have a workshop, a community workshop to try to seek community input, which we did have on September 7th, last Wednesday. Uh, it was a fairly good uh, turnout. Uh, I think we probably had 35 to 40 people show up and there was some good discussion uh, on sort of the feedback from the community and how we'd like to see the RFP structured. And from that meeting, um, <coughs> hopefully the CPC members that were there that evening and the Board of Selectmen members were able to take what they learned from that and be able to try to finalize an RFP tonight so we can get it released and get um, the proposals out there and hopefully we'll get the request for proposals out there so we can start to receive them. The goal is once we finish this step this evening, if we can come to an agreement on an RFP, the goal would be get the release with a 60-day return for the people that are interested. And so that should put us close to uh, sometime in December and then hopefully we'll make some kind of award the first of the year. So what I'd like to do is, uh, if it's okay, Mr. Chairman, is to introduce uh, Mr. DeCoste from TRA, who has been uh, working with us hand, hand in hand to take us through the process. We have a little presentation he was going to run through. We can ask some more questions, and then we can go from there. Excuse me. I just, I just have a question, Mike. Has the full CPC yeah. have seen this, right? I don't think they've seen this presentation. Even this board oh, okay. hasn't seen so this, this presentation. Is, this it's, is from the take. It's roughly the, the same meeting. presentation we he presented okay. on Wednesday, last Wednesday evening, mm -hmm. but I think there's a little bit less in it, right? I mean, there's yeah. only a few Actually, slides. It's a little bit different. It's a it's lot different than well, last Wednesday. <laughs> okay, so, I haven't uh, seen it either. So, I was. Um, okay. I did. I know you sent it to me in advance, yeah, but I haven't had a chance to take it. So, um, Mr. Chairman. 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 Yeah. I just want to. I ask a, a question. Are there any members other than the elected officials uh, that are from the EDC at all here? No. So the, or the yes. chairman of the, yeah, well, yeah, but he's, he's an elected official. Uh, is the chairman for the EDC here at all? No, they couldn't make it tonight. They, that's why they went to the workshop. They participated in the workshop and now this is really up to us to make a decision. We've gotten their feedback at the workshop and you all <coughs> heard the members of the EDC and their inputs from at the workshop and now it's up to us to make a decision how we want to finalize this RP. That's what the goal of tonight's but meeting we won't was. We would be able to ask them a question if, if we had one. Well that wasn't the goal of tonight. I think tonight I think the EDC did their job, they held the workshop and now they turn it over to the Board of Selectmen and the CPC jointly to make a decision on the RFP based on the feedback that was discussed on the on September 7th. I, I, I just thought that this would be an important thing that they'd want to attend and um, uh, be here to support the effort. That's what I would think. Noted. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just a, a brief comment for the members of the selectmen. Um, as you know, we've we got a short time frame between Wednesdays meeting and tonight's meeting 
and we had a draft of the RFP that was put into the meeting packet sometime around midnight on Saturday night. Uh, late this afternoon, we received an updated draft from Town Council, which has been put into your Dropbox folder for tonight's meeting. It begins with the word development and it ends with today's date, 9-12-16. Um, <coughs> I think that what, what Mr. Uh, Tegras is going to speak to is going to address most of what's in there anyway, but I just call that out so that the board members are aware. Could you just highlight whatever changes were from what I read the other day to what I might be, which I, I haven't looked at? I believe that yeah, this gentleman made nearly all the changes <laughs> he probably can. Uh, how about we run through it and then we can... I think that's a good idea. Good. Well, I'll let the gentleman run through it. All right. Uh, we got all set in? All right. Once again, my name is Fran DeCoast, and uh, I'm, your, I'm your broker here. And uh, we spent a lot of time going through um, these um, the plans here and the, the, had the community meeting. And so we've uh, got to it, what we hope is the final, the final drafting of the RFP. And uh, you know, we really listened to what the town wants to accomplish here, and tried to structure an RFP that gives you flexibility to allow you to basically choose what you think is in the best interest of the town. And it's open to the fact that you know, if there are uses, potential uses out there that may not necessarily be allowed under current zoning that there's flexibility there to allow the town <coughs> to consider moving forward with those plans. So this is just a picture of the site, so we can ready to sort of refresh ourselves. And it's important to note that there's you know, parcel A and parcel B. We're, we're going to be putting out the first uh, part of this RFP is for parcel A, and we're going to um, planning on putting out parcel B a little bit down the road, hopefully in a strategy to create more value in parcel B once we determine the, what the potential use is for parcel A. Um, and uh, this is the actual site plan. And uh, just to remind everybody that the, uh, there's a road right here, the access road that goes in. It's a shared access with the apartment complex. This is the wastewater disposal field. Um, that serves the, the, the sewer treatment plant for the apartments here and has allocated a certain amount of flow for the use of these two properties. Um, so in general, um, for the RFP, it's for the sale and redevelopment of the larger parcel A. And our, the RFP for parcel B will be at a later date. We were gonna, from the date that we issue the RFP, we're going to be asked. We're going to ask for submittals within 60 days. It's important to note is that that is our goal. Uh, if we receive feedback from the development community that they may need additional time, we can consider putting that out. Um, the point of contact is going to be the town planner's office. That's important. There's not going to be in a public offering. Everybody has to have the fair shot of the same information, so it has to be funneled through one source and responded to in writing to everyone. So what we'll do is we will have a question, a question period where you can put in uh, questions. Um, we will have a site tour. We will have a pre-bid pre, uh, pre conference. So we'll probably have it here and invite the development community to come in. And we'll do a briefing of the site and give them a lot of information that uh, we've provided to you all over, over the last month or so, just to get them um, familiar with the site, we're going to go through the requirements of the RFP and explain it to them. So, and ask questions if there's any confusion in what we're asking for. You know, our, our, uh, I'll go into some, some of the asks a little bit probably down the road. Um, once we have that meeting, we'll ask the final questions and we'll issue written answers to the questions and any addendums that need to be addressed if there's some changes to the RFP document. Um, and then when, uh, when, comes, when the due date comes, they'll be submitted to the town administrator's office and we're requiring a $10,000 proposal deposit. That's right. So the RFP terms, the first thing I, I mentioned, the town will consider proposals for uses that are not currently allowed by zoning. You know, so 
part of my job is to tell to make developers aware that well you know if you have a use that you don't think fits here but you want to go for it you want to try give us a proposal tell us what you what they think um, the town is going to need to do to allow their use we're leaving that flexibility so we're not shutting anybody up um, it's going to be subject to all the all the easements um, on the site for the shared shared use um, and there's some utility easements uh, there's a the wastewater uh, disposal easement for the apartments and what we're going to do do is we're reserving rights for water treatment for the possible B goal there is and what we're going to do is we're going to reserve 20,000 gallons per day that that can that allow us to get a hotel and a restaurant on that site if we can bring an anchor in that that can, can attract that type of co-use we are um, the, the site's being sold as is you know so any environmental risks are on the developer there are in, in the uh, phase two report there there has been um, you know listed out some concern <coughs> of some uh, potential environmental risks associated with steam pipes and asbestos but we're we, and we've, we're providing the, the proposes with copies of those reports they'll be on the website and it's at their peril to look and, and figure this out um, that, and that's an important thing you know, one of the things when we talk about the terms is the due diligence we're going to give them 60 days due diligence um, to do those type of investigations and you know basically you know some geotech type of stuff and you know if if they go out and they discover that some of this uh, so some of these potential environmental issues could impact the development that's that's what they're going to address up front that's what the due diligence is for okay um, we are stating the appraised value of the, of the property so we're stating it and, and we're making we're making a, um, a statement that says the town reserves the right to designate based on overall best value so um, that gives the town flexibility if someone makes a proposal that is very favorable to the town but the land value does not meet that appraised value um, it gives you the opportunity to select that proposer okay where the only caveat is that you know if you accept uh, a proposal for less than the appraised value you just have to put a notice in the central register that you're doing that at post post proposal um, so some of the uh, so prices of course one of the components in the in the, uh, in the RFP that you're going to the evaluation will be based on the other is <coughs> qualifications we want to make sure that it's a development team that has the experience to uh, pull off whatever they're proposing to develop you don't want someone who's built a couple uh, duplex units coming in and proposing you know a shopping center that they have no experience it, you know, we want to make make sure you're getting experience developing what they're proposing the financial capability they're going to provide one proof that they have enough money to at least get the front you know permitting pr part of the the property done um, you know and, and just have the financial capability to to get the get the deal financed um, they're going to provide uh, uh, we're requiring references banking references that we will check um, and uh, if they have uh, investors that are interested in the property then a letter of interest and things like that um, and then the final final criteria is the development program concept and feasibility so this is where we're asking for the program what are you going to build where we're asking for a site plan we're asking for some elevations we're asking for a pro forma uh, we're asking for a description of the benefits it's going to provide the town both, you know, and, and maybe some offsite improvements. Uh, what's the ongoing economic uh, return to the town? That that's a big big asset we have in there. Um, on the feasibility side, we're looking at we're looking for project performance to make sure that there's a there's a gut check here to make sure that you know they're not proposing a project that costs 100 bucks a foot to build in a 200 dollar per foot market and uh, you know the feasibility of rents and things like that and you know, I think 
most of you have seen the market, the market study we did. We have a lot of good information of what the market rents are and things like that. So, um, you know, th that's sort of the, the, the criteria of, of, of how we're going to judge them. And we're <coughs> asking them to do a proposal that sort of quantifies all these, all these uh, different, different areas. Uh, we have forms that will sort of ask them to show us in your reference index in your, in your proposal where, where, where you're addressing these issues so that it's going to be easy for the evaluators to say, okay, well, you know, here's this, and it's on page six, boom, it's right there. So the forms are uh, important. So there'll be four of these criteria, tri criteria, the price, the team qualifications, financial capability, and development program that you're going to, that, that the evaluation is going to be based on, and it's really, there's not going to be grading or anything. We're going to do it. It's going to be unacceptable or advantageous to the town. So that's sort of how the reviewers of the are going to evaluate it and determine whether or not um, the proposals are acceptable. And you know, based on based on those those evaluations, you you come up and determine who who uh, you feel is um, the best proposal and the best the best value to the town. And that that's how it's judged. Um, my role as your consultant is I will be reviewing these packages to make sure they're complete and um, you know, pro provide some summary information, if a, you know, a, sort of a, a briefing memo on each proposal, which will go to the evaluation committee. The EDC will evaluate and make, make their recommendation to the Board of Selectmen of the successful proposal. <coughs> So um, once, once a successful proposal has been designated, we're, we're going to be doing an, a purchase and sale agreement. Um, we're requiring that purchase. So um, let's go back. I, I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, the time frame that we have for the evaluation and designation is a 60-day period from receipt of the proposals. That's sort of our goal. We have the flexibility to move that, to change it. Uh, we have the flexibility to not take any proposals, to reject them all. Um, so there, there is a lot of flexibility in the town for how that works. We just put a 60-day goal because uh, it's good for proposers to know, well, I'm going to propose unless I have my answer within 60 days. Um, you get the more certainty we can uh, create and, and give to the development community, the better, better opportunities we have to get, get um, proposals. Um, so, we, uh, we, the EDC will recommend the Board of Selectmen approve and designate, and then we're on, we're on to the purchase and sale agreement. Purchase and sale agreement will need to be executed within 60 days of designation. Um, there is a reason why that 60 days is, um, is there, because along with the purchase and sale agreement, we're going to be um, doing a, uh, a land development agreement or land, dis land development agreement, that's what it's called, yeah, to sort of help protect the town's interest in how this project goes forward. And I'll, I'll touch on some of the details, details of that. Um, we're asking for a 5% uh, deposit uh, of the purchase price. That'll be due at the time of the execution of the purchase and sale agreement. From the date of execution, we have 60-day due diligence. And this is where my developer lingo may get ahead of you so if you have any questions. So what we're, our due diligence is saying, okay, the time clock's right now, you got 60 days to do your title work. So, you know, they can look in and do, have a title examination and make sure there's nothing there that would um, prevent them from buying this property on the title and make the town aware if there are issues that need to be addressed. Going back to the RFP, the RFP we say, if there's issues, we don't have to do anything about it. So you're not those 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 are those, you're not obligated to, to, to fix any issues that come up. It's your choice, and that 60 days is the time period that the developer gets the opportunity to tell you if there's a problem. Okay, and we talked a little bit about some of the challenges today with town council, and uh, we'll, we'll be ready for those. Um, the environmental, so that that's another issue that uh, that. They, they, you, we're providing them with phase one and phase two reports. Most li likely they're going to run their own 
phase one, phase two. Um, and they're, they're most likely going to need to do some geotechnical um, st studies and, and, and tests based on the f what, whatever requirements they have for uh, wastewater treatment and stuff like that they need to get on site. So that due diligence period is really the developer's chance to get in, kick the tires, and say, okay, I want to do this here, but uh, I want to make sure I can do it here physically. At the end of the due diligence period, the developer can either say, I'm, I'm, I'm out, I pass. This is not going to work for me. Or they say, okay, let's move on. And at that point, their 5% deposit becomes non-refundable. So that, and that, that's key because in the development, in the development business, that's sort of, you, you're going hard on your deposit um, and there's a real risk that, that you're going to lose it. So if, you know, six months down the line, they just decide, you know what, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, you know, they, they'd be in default of their purchase and sale agreement and you could keep the deposit. Um, Excuse What's me, the, the, excuse, the deposit is due at the time of the PNS or yes. after the 60 day due diligence? At, at the execution of the PNS. Okay? One, one important point about the refundability of the deposit we have it in there that if, the, if, if, the, uh, if they're going, if they get denied for their permits, for their proposed use, the 5% deposit is refundable. It's only fair you guys control that, that permitting process. Uh, we have stated in this closing within 180 days, and we've allowed for extension options. Those extension options will cost an, will cost an additional deposit of a quarter point. Uh, we're, trying, we're trying to hold the developers' feet to the fire. We have, we have all the tools in place. We have an ex expedited uh, priority process, um, and this is done with the goal of trying to get this thing closed so that you can, you can um, get some bonus bonus return on, on your uh, land disposition agreement with the state. And like I said, the, uh, the purchase and sale agreement is going to be subject to developer executing and meeting the requirements of the land development agreement. So the LDL um, is done a lot. Um, it's agreement that uh, really defines the requirements for the developer and it survives um, delivery of the deed, so it puts it on them after they close on the land. It has it holds them to the to the feet to the fire on them performing. Um, so, w what are some of those requirements? One that the developer is obligated to develop the property in accordance with the RFP. Okay, someone comes in and gives you two hundred fifty thousand square feet of office space for the site. Well, it, and you have decided that. Well, that's a good deal. You know, we're, we'll go with them. We'll sell the we'll sell the sell the land to them for a certain price. You want to make sure that's what you get. You don't want to, you know, agree to something and have them come in with something else. Okay. So, this is almost like a use restriction, sort of. And we were we were vetting this out with the attorneys today, so that they they can't they can't give you a. A switch and bait on that. They, you, you're controlling <coughs> that use of the land so that, and this is how it works in, in real life is something happens and they can't pull off the development for whatever reason. They've gone through the permits, they got to finance, they close on the land, and then the bank, banking world goes crazy. You know, the banks don't fund or something like that. Well, if the developer has an option, finds another option to develop the site, this LDL will make them come back to you. They get, they, they, they just can't go. They, they can't go through and go for permits according to your zoning, and try to put in another program, because this is gonna, gonna block them from doing that. Okay, um, so it gives you. So for example, and this, this is where we're vetting this out today. That we have a we have a land value of two million seven, some change, right? You get a proposal in for a certain use. But it's only it's less than the appraised value. Say it's uh, you know two million bucks, and the town, you you all decide that you know what, that's the use we want here. The two million bucks, that's great. Let's go for it. So you're basically underwriting, underwriting the value of that land, um, for for the public benefit. Great. Well, if that if that use falls out of out of place, 
and now they go and have another use, you have the right to say, well, you know what, I gave you, I gave, I gave you a haircut on the land price. Let, let's look at what you try to do now. I, you know, you want, it preserves, it preserves, you know, the value there. Okay? Um, it's going to require that all the permits and approvals for the development are, are received prior to closing. They've got to get everything, so there's no land speculation here. They're going to get their permits, and it's going to be a requirement. It requires proof of financing before they close. So they get their permits, and they need to have their, their project finance in place and ready to go. So they get their permits, and the town's ready to close, and we feel we have a real project that's going to go forward. Um, uh, and there's some other, other uh, endemic, it's it sort of, it sort of will, um, we, have, we haven't got the language yet, but uh, it'll define any, all the indemnifications required from the developer uh, to the town. It'll define that all cost associated with this development is borne by the developer, not by the town. And it talks about default rights and, and how, that, how that would be handled. And like I said, what's important about this is you're not going to close on this deal until they've got their permits, they've got their financing in place, and they're ready to go, but the agreement will survive that closing and make sure that you get the project that you bargained for when you did this deal. Um, I, think, I think that's, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> so, um, well, questions? I want to start off with a question. <coughs> there was a long, uh, long discussion on Wednesday night regarding not so much this proposal, but the town articles that the CPC were proposing that left off, as Mr. O'Leary had pointed out, uh, residential. So I think in the end, the, the consensus was we were just going to withdraw that article. And I think we knew that based on the proposals, that we'll, because we're flexible enough to change the zoning, that we would probably have a special town meeting to deal with it. Here, you mentioned something about time frames and then a requirement to have all the permits. And I see scheduling a town meeting, getting certain things approved so that the permits can be granted in case the zoning doesn't allow something that comes in you know, on the proposal that everyone wants to go forward with. I just think that timing-wise, based on what you proposed here, is a little on the tight side. <coughs> Um, I don't know if you've thought through that or not. I have, to, I have to thought through that. Um, and what's important is that you're going to get proposals. Okay? We've asked as part of the proposal that the developer outline any type of zoning relief. Okay? We've allowed for 180 days with the right to, to extend it to 90 day extensions. Okay, so, so what you're saying is that right up front, whoever's bidding has to identify what they need permits for right. or what zoning they need. Yes. Okay. All right. And if we have to go to a special town meeting, no, then we I, can I make that decision. Yeah. You no, know, I understood that. I was just thinking of timing, but I forgot the 180 days. Yes. And, and it's important in the evaluation, the evaluators have to keep, when they look at the proposals, that's an important thing for them to weigh. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Because <coughs> if there's something there that's... I got it. I, I yeah. have ignored the uh, 180 days. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, Mr. O'Leary and then... Yeah. Just, uh, Kelly. just the upfront 60 days um, requirement of the applicants here, or the proposers, developers, is that normal or appropriate given what the RFP is calling for? I mean, you're looking for some pretty detailed plans. You're looking for an awful lot of information, and depending upon the proposals they have, uh, pretty aggressive, uh, it just not being a developer, but it would appear to me that it's a pretty aggressive time frame in the first 60 days 
to have specific proposals with all the schematic designs and everything else you're looking for here and zoning changes and all the rest, is that aggressive or is it normal and appropriate or should we be looking at an additional 30 days for that initial in order to appropriately allow for proposals to be put forth? Um, that is a good question. So what we're asking conceptually is for a site plan, conceptual site plan, and just elevations. We're not asking for building plans or anything like that. So I, I, I thought a lot of time, a lot of these are done in 30 days. So I, we, we did the extra 30 days to 60 days. I thought that allowed enough time for a developer to get that, get that information together and do their performance. Okay. Um, we have flexibility where if we start receiving requests from developers saying we need an additional week or two weeks, we can make the decision to extend the due date. Who's we? The town. Okay. And I guess well, my question will come back now to um, if something, if a request like that is made, I guess it's more for the board to answer, I guess. Uh, CPC and the board, you know, would that request come to the board in order to allow for the extension to take place? No, not necessarily just the EDC or, or the planner or the town administrator. I'm, I'm more concerned about ensuring that um, legitimate proposals are given enough time to, to be put together and put forth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so well, I, I don't think you can answer that. I can't answer that. Yeah, <laughs> you can't answer that. But, and again, it's so, you know, it gets back to my initial question of is 60 days truly enough based upon what you know in relation to the types of proposals that could come forward and again some of them are more complex than others um, is 60 days reasonable and appropriate or would 75 and 90 days be better and, and if you do 75 and 90 days does that impact people wanting to know and have the decision sooner I, I, don't, I don't know this is this is part of what you well, like I said, a lot of times I've, I've done them in 30 days, mm -hmm. um, but because of the size of the site and everything, I mean, there is information available. There's a survey, there's a topo available. So there's some good information to start with to do, to do some of this stuff. Um, I, I, I'm comfortable with 60 days. Um, okay. But my, my home only point is that we could get feedback that people need more time. And, um, how that, that, I'm not sure the process of how that gets approved through you all would be, but. Uh, What's that? So we'll figure that out. Yeah. That the, the, other, the other question I have is, is, is directly related to what we now have in the drop box as opposed to what we had in the drop box and what I looked at and what being proposed now. What are the differences between what was put in the drop box Saturday and what was there, what is there today? Do you have so those? Friend uh, to Mr. Chairman, through you, has the answer. just to assist, well, he's going to have the more detailed answer, I think. But so what was put in the drop box over the weekend was the version that was circulated on Friday by town council, I believe, which you reviewed this morning. That's we had a conference call on, and you made some changes to it, sent them back to town council. He may have tweaked things, but those are the changes that we're, that we're talking about. Right. Yeah, so, so I just, again, this was put in two hours ago. I mean, we were here in the meeting when it was put in the Dropbox. Um, yeah. So what I looked at, I just need to know what the differences are from what I already looked at. Um, there's quite a few changes. <laughs> um, no, that's, that's, yeah, um, so I'm sorry. You guys saw what I saw. I didn't see it till this morning, so I want to make sure. That I yeah, my guess is what you saw this morning is what we saw. What we saw on right. Saturday. Right. Okay. What you looked at this morning yeah. was what we received on Saturday. Okay. So what you sent back today is all we're asking for. It's what okay. changes what, did what you change? what's, what's the differences? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Just what I you it. sent back today. I got it. So I got it right there. So we, we, uh, we had a conversation today. Uh, one of the important things was that um, the attorney had, he, was con he, he had some comments about us considering making changes to the bylaws, but we kept those in. So, uh, so the, uh, on your copy, in the summary, the, the, uh, the language that the attorney struck, we put back in. 
That's in, that's in uh, the first paragraph. So there's no change there. So no change there. No change there. No ch we didn't accept his proposed change. Okay, we just want to know what the change is at. Yeah. Well, he, he had deleted it, so. Okay. Um, the, uh, the other changes that we made to that were um, I added in um, the uh, allowance for the 60-day due diligence period that he had deleted. He, we, here's, here's the big difference. We had a, we had a um, sample purchase and sale agreement in the original uh, draft. The, the attorneys decided not to use a sample purchase and sale agreement, and they took the general terms of the purchase and sale agreement and they put it into the body of the RFP. Okay, So the information that you all received um, did not include uh, a provision to allow the 60-day due diligence period. So we added that in. It also did not um, address the deposit and in the terms where the deposit would be refundable or non-refundable. So we added that in. So that's a new section C that um, in section 402. Do you have a red line version? I do. We can actually put it up on the screen, right? Well, I'd like to. Do you guys have it? Look at it. No, we do not have that. No, we don't have it. That's what I'm saying. We're yeah. looking at it as you're explaining to, it yeah, to us I, this yeah, evening. I, I, this yeah. was done. But this that, that also means that the EDC didn't actually review changes as a body or approve changes as a body. And well, we're, we're not approving the RFP. We, well, this we're is recommending. Right. We, we provided our recommendations at the 7th of September meeting. Now we are here tonight to try to finalize that RFP. I, I so will it have I, to? I, I will personally it would like to have, have an opportunity to read it, look at it. To, I mean, I know what I looked at. I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Mr. Chairman, through you, Fran, do, do you have, I mean, is that a marked up version that we could? This is a marked up version. Okay, does it, does it, is it in color or is there, I mean, how, how does it? It's in black and white. It's red line. Well, not red line. <laughs> not red line, yeah. yeah. Of course, red line. I have a version with my notes about what was staying and what was going. Now, this, this, was the, this, is, this is the version that we changed. We sent it back to the attorneys this afternoon, they, and they accepted the changes we made to this. Mr. Chair? Well, look, I will, we throw with. Uh, yeah. no. Catherine's next. Okay. You got, you got <laughs> I, I do, yeah, I, do I did, as you were talking, I was looking through what was put in the drop box a few hours ago, so that's what I want to focus questions on, mm -hmm. and a couple of things in your presentation. And sure. I agree, actually, with, I, I wasn't privy to the discussion, but in terms of that, I'm just going to try to go in as much order as I can in consecutive order, but I understand why the council might want to strike that provision regarding accepting proposals that are outside of the zoning. And I agree, but I agree that it should be kept in, and maybe some caveat stating that we're not under any obligation to change zoning, um, putting some additional protection in there for the town. Yeah, we'd agree we'd accept it. I could see why council would want it stricken, because you don't want to lead someone into believing, well, we'll just change it based on your proposal, even though we want to entertain whatever might come forward as a qualified responsive proposal even if it's outside the current zoning. Mm -hmm. So maybe just adding a little bit of well, qualifying yeah. language that says we don't have to do that. We don't, we're not obligated to do that. That Something was in like the that. original. Yeah, and the language that I believe is you, Mr. Chairman, through you, the language I believe that's included is that the town may consider zoning changes associated right. with the relevant right. proposal. It, so it, no it, it says the town will consider, not may consider. It says will. Yeah, so that's a, that's legally distinct language. So I would say that we don't want to bind ourselves. We will we'll consider proposals, but we're not going to bind ourselves to make zoning changes. You know what I mean? Sure. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, my understanding from our conference call earlier, Fran, is that the intention was that it would indicate that we may consider. Yeah. That's what was discussed verbally, but the word okay. sounds like the wording says will. I'm not will sure consider that. proposals, will consider pursuing changes. That's what it reads. So that's yeah. fine. That I think that intent. that's... That's fine, but it's, we're not going to be obligated to well, make zoning we'll change changes. And may consider pursuing changes to its bylaws. I, I, I think maybe that would address that issue because that jumps out to me as well. 
I think this incorporated a lot of what we asked you to do, which is fantastic. And I think it puts together everything that we're looking for to grab proposals on this. So I think this is great. I just have, mine are just, I have questions for you in terms of capturing every potential valid proposal and how that's, that's going to be vetted for us. So my second thing is you mentioned a, that there's already information out there. So th you said the survey, I think you mentioned two items that are already out there. What we're planning to do is post them on the town's website. Yeah. Um, and we, the phase one and phase two report. The 21 post, um, we can post. Mm -hmm. We can post the uh, the uh, survey, the topo, yeah. which is uh, I think the topo is recorded too. It's part right. Of it's some yeah. of the uh, documents too. Mm -hmm. So as a package for potential proposers, why can't you provide that in the packet? Just give it to them. It's it's expense. Them. It's it's um, well the environmental report. It's huge. huge. No, no, but yeah. steer them to the town website. Well, yeah, for the, yeah. The, it's doing that. Yeah. No, we're we're doing that. Believe yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah, Leave because it, yeah. I, we are, I, we we um we said that in the uh, environmental that yep. we post in the town the town's website. All right, so I think that's important to have yeah. it out there yeah. or yeah, as part agree. of this link it up to this RFP yeah. well, well, or attach well, it to the RFP. Here's what's important on stuff is that the RFP has to be requested. Okay, so we we're not going to post the RFP on the website. They're going to have to request it from Danielle. Mm -hmm. So that she can, she can register, register them as a potential uh, proposal. That way, that's how that's how you administer the public bid process. To my familiarity with administrating administering the public bid process, if there's any re relevant data such as these items, you provide it in a packet to someone who's seeking the packet. So. Registering them is one thing. Saying, you know, it's out there is another. But actually directing them to it, here it is, and making sure they have it is really what we want. So it says it in, um, in the RFP for the environmental reports. It refers, it says that it will be posted on the town's website. Okay, so they're already going to know. Here it is. Here's where you find it. You're registered. Make sure you look at this, right? Yes. As part of your proposal. You know what I mean? So that, that was my other thing. Are there any other things besides those two that someone would? We refer to the easements. Yes. We refer no. them to the registry. So we gave them the book and page. Do we have a copy of that, though, that we can? It's a public, it's a public record on the, on the registry. Yeah. But don't we have it to put on our website or something like we that as part of this? Um, the survey plan or the easement documents? The easement documents. There are so many of them that I would be nervous about missing, missing something. something if we try to replicate everything. I don't even know where yeah. all of the references are. I mean, I have a lot of reusement documents, but if they go back, I rep. So I rep in the document. I reference it back to the to the to recording information at the registry. <laughs> you Mr. Chairman, through you to clarify the recording that was the town's acquiring ownership a year ago. Um, Is that actually, what you're I actually gave the book and page of the uh, specific easements too. Yes. Okay. No, it's not. I know which ones they are. Yeah, it's not. It's not just what was a year ago. It goes back to the easements that were done with um, on the apartment project. So it's all it's all referenced back uh, to where, where they can get that information. So we don't actually have it here for our own records. I, I have I have some information. Okay. Um, I mean we 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 could. <coughs> download it. I, mean, I just—it's a method that we yeah. do. We, we re yeah. refer to the registry. Of course. If I'm a developer, I really don't. You're want gonna to do see your it. diligence and look it's it up anyway. Yeah. 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 To go to the registry and read But the, wouldn't read we want to know it for ourselves and have it for it's ourselves? It's available to us as it is to them. If, if Which we've already done. To, uh, but we're not the developers. So. But we already did that review. Right. Yes. We did it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Right. Well, we were, so we, we, weren't, we weren't overly concerned with whatever they were anyway. Right. Getting right. it for a buck, so but whatever is, whatever the issues are, or were, it was it was okay. It's it was, okay it was, yeah. with us. <laughs> but we didn't do it. Yeah, it was reviewed. Oh no, we did it. We, we did a detailed review. Well, 
Yeah. 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 Can't be what allows. The so what's your concern, right, Kate? Right. Because Just right. having this information in well, one we, location, maybe with I one person. I that, do. that yeah. yeah, yeah. That because you have such a we have such a tight timeline on this that you sort of want it in one spot so someone can go and access it. You know, they have to do their own work on it as well. But I do have a couple of shelves. <laughs> <laughs> of, of files yeah, and a lot so of stuff is, it, it, it should all be in there, but there are thousands and thousands of. Of course, so, I would expect um, that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They're gonna have someone they, do yeah. the review of all the titles and all the easements and all of this. That's the right. title search company's gonna do that for them. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and then the other guy's gonna do the environmental issues, and then they're gonna have an engineer look at other things. You know, I can do. You know. Yeah, I'm just saying, and just in terms of reviewing this, if there's some sort of central location to direct people to. Their central location is Danielle. There's the Lancor, right. That's, 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 where they that's where they should be going. We don't want to change it. We make it say we have it. We have it right. We don't want to be the central repository. They can go back from there. It's it's history of the, of, of the registry then, and it doesn't come back to us. I think we should put just the, the, the newest information we have from when we bought the property. They can go to that book and page, and that book and page will tell them where to go. Mm -hmm. Trace it back, yeah. Now, I've done that in the old days when you had to go to the registry and look at all the books and pages 200 years back. So in section 2.03? I, I was, yes, that, that I, was, I was actually going to, before we even got there, though, I have another question just on that. There's a couple of zoning um, you have the aquifer protection overlay. Is that for the entire parcel? Is that, does that govern the entire parcel? And is there a reference to that and what that means in terms of the development of the parcel for proposed no. development? No. No. So no. this is a very important point. You, you, you don't want to make any representations. Okay. No, I, I mean a reference to, you know, what that means. In other words, where's, where can that be found? The our zoning bylaw, okay. Oh, so yeah. that that's so you're gonna re <coughs> give reference to our zoning bylaw. They're gonna look that up anyway. Yeah, okay. is, yeah. yeah, and is that the same thing with that the the Berry Center overlay? It's also in the zone. So that'll be in our yeah, zoning it's always, yeah. bylaw. Yeah. Okay. What you don't want to yeah. do in these is say this means you have to do that. No, no, I, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm just saying, let's say I wanted to make a proposal, which I don't, but I'm just saying. I, I'd want to know where can I find this, and I'd want to be able to see in the RFP right. where, you know, and right. I, I obviously understand a sophisticated developer is going to do title rundown and tit more than a rundown, a title review of this and all that. Um, and, and let me, you make a very good point, sophisticated developer. And our goal is, and this is structured so that we're, we're talking to sophisticated yes. developers yeah. who, can, who can pull off mm -hmm. a project like that. So yeah. some of the stuff, and I say it all the time, my lingo, I mean, this is sort of like second nature to me. I, most of this due diligence I can do in about 10 minutes on a, on a project I look at. Right. So we're sending to the right, my goal is to send them to the, tell them, okay, this is where you're gonna get this? Yes, and you yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I, definitely, okay. yeah. Um, and then the other thing I had a question on was in um, the, um, the, the, these section 301 where, where we're going to do a PNS and an LDA and the PNS and the LDA, um, can we, do we have the right to incorporate, depending on what proposal may be accepted, additional provisions in the PNS or the LDA? In other words, you have a, a basically a template which you <coughs> said, we looked at a template but now it's basically the provisions are sort of take it out and put into this mm -hmm. and then we're going to have an LDA. Are we reserving the right? It's not, it's beyond just a standard one in other words. Yeah. Are we going to be able to add in the provisions that are yes. Um, yes. specific to um, what's the final acceptable proposal? Yes. Uh, it's definitely a lot of standard terms and conditions and the requisite certifications and things like that. Right. Um, so I, I, I think the attorney's point is that we're doing this purchase and sale agreement. These are the main points that have been there, but it's a negotiation. Yeah. Correct. yeah. And you know yeah. what? When you do your designation, right. if you can make that as a, as a, as a term of designation. 
that's okay. So we would have the right to maybe capture additional things that might not necessarily be a recitation here in this. Yeah. In terms of the in in terms of the appraised value that you have, and you mentioned this as an example, let's say someone comes in way below that. Are we putting that appraised value in there sort of as a minimum expectation of what we're going to receive for, in a proposal? or? So uh, when I originally drafted it, I did make it a minimum. That's what, um, I, that's, uh, that's what I thought we talked about, yeah. <laughs> right, but the, uh, when we went through a review of this, um, it was determined that it's best to give you the maximum flexibility on this. Uh, we, we put the... I, the appraisal value is there as a benchmark, so at least someone knows approximately what the value is on there, um, and they can make their proposals based on. We're, we're not we're not limiting their proposals to that. That is the minimum, so they can propose whatever they want. <coughs> this is the appraised value, is it, and it says in here that it's the town's decision to accept the best value. It doesn't necessarily mean the which is not necessarily best appraised value. So just in relation to the, the current appraised value that's based upon current zoning, you know, so therefore that could fluctuate depending upon a proposal as to what it would be if a proposal calls for a zoning change that would enhance the, the appraised value of the property, yeah. you would hope that it would be reflected in their offer. You hope. You would hope, right? Yep. Uh, and, and, and what's important on that is we do have an allowance for best and final offer. So say. You did have someone that had a proposal for something that you think would add value to the land over what they're proposing. You could go back to them and say, you know what? Give us a better offer. Well, and we would be relying on you as our broker to say, listen, with this proposal, <coughs> the market value could change to X amount, right? It would be something that we would address through the evaluation process? Right. Yep. Okay. All right. H how long and I want a high... <laughs> no, but how, how long would it ta how long would it take an appraiser to, to redo an appraisal based upon a proposal? Again, this is part of the timeline thing from our vantage point. Mm -hmm. That's important uh, because I know getting appraisals done sometimes takes a lot of time. Okay. Thirty uh, to sixty days. Right. Does what we're putting out here allow that to happen in order for us to negotiate from a stronger standpoint with a proposal that's coming forth where we say, well, you know what, you got to sweeten the pot a little bit because what you're proposing here, if we change the zoning bylaw, you know, that's now worth $7 million, not 2.78. So, so the, the uh, RP allows you, so we, we define it as 60 days designation, but you do have the flexibility to change that. So if you need more time before you designate based on, if you're in a proposal you like, and you say, hey, we need an appraisal on this to make sure we're getting the best value, um, you'd have to extend out the designation date to get that appraisal. Or you can designate and say subject, make that a term, subject to... Uh, Do we have to make that, this is, excuse me, that, that uh, flexibility is before we designate the, the developer we like or after? The flexibility is, is currently there. The way it's written is before we can designate. And, and you, we have the ability to go back, it looks like, and negotiate that point. If well, that's well, prove our point. Prove the in point, order to I guess, put us yeah. in a stronger negotiation yeah. position. But, <coughs> okay. but you, uh, you actually had told us at the, the, that um, workshop and at the last time that we met that, that the market analysis was based on present zoning. That's correct. So yeah. it... But the, the appraisal was based on current zoning. The market the, appraisal yeah. is yeah. based market on current study zoning. Is, yeah. Yeah. The market it's study is something different, different, different that tells us it's, it's worth sorry. more doing something else. Assuming that, you know, all, all things are equal and that there's a, another use that you can evaluate, you'd probably be able to turn that around in a quick period of time, having already done all this work on an appraisal of current zoning. I, I may, although the appraisals go stale, and the appraisal may say I need to do a whole new appraisal. Mm -hmm. I mean, put it this way, yeah. Um, and, and just think of it this way, he did his appraisal, all his comps are based on yes. the land that's similar yeah. land. Right. So, he, so it's not just, oh well, what do we do this? He has to go out and do all those same comps. Okay. New, new comps, so again, I, I'd hate to, so I said 30 to 60 days. Okay. But it could be closer to 30. Um, 
Um, but because a lot of the data is done, if we use the same appraisal, but the analysis, the comparables and things, that's a whole component okay. that you have to have to do. Yeah. I only have about 35 more questions. <laughs> Far away. Just kidding. About <laughs> four. Just four. Um, just in terms of the, um, the again, I think it's, it's well written in terms of what the what the um, how it's going to be evaluated and what what's going to be considered in an evaluation as acceptable and responsive or unacceptable. And, um, can we, as a board, it looks like they'll be it'll be whittled down to one. Can we, as a board, want to know what the EDC's top five are or the ones that get rated the top five are to consider them? I mean, it looks like. Th this is probably a question aside from the RFP because the RFP only has to address the best one that comes up uh, to be to be put before the selectmen. But what about it? What about us knowing what else is is presented to the EDC for evaluation? Well, see, the, the, the RFP also allows for having I think two others. Yes. Held in the bank uh, where you're holding up, holding up the deposit in case the first one falls off the table. Yeah, and, and ba baffle run. So. Hey, so for example, the CDC may pick three. Okay. Right? Yeah. And say. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Out yeah, of 30. Right. Out of 30, <laughs> right? All right. And out of 300. No, pick, pick three of them that yes. they feel is qualified. Right. Right. Okay. So you got half a dozen proposals. Three of them, we like these three. Okay. Okay. And they may recommend one, or they may say, you know what, we like these three. Yep. Let's do a BAFO and see who gives us the best deal. Okay. If they're that close. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. But we'll be communicating through this whole entire process. I mean, yes. we're not going to be, well, I mean, you know, I excluding understand. anybody from the process. I want to make sure that's clear and upfront. And all the information as it's coming in will be available to both boards. So you yeah. you can Rather see. Rather than 15 copies, so. Yeah, but it's going to be available. They can make <laughs> well, the time to come in and look at it. We have each board has got a voting member on the EDC, mm -hmm. and then we have a second board member that's a liaison. I'm not sure what yeah, the they CPC do, they do is. Yeah. Two more things sure. on this. Um, in section 403 of the, it's the land development agreement section, there, there were two things that we talked about that I think we were hoping to incorporate into an LDA, which was a, a schedule of completion you know, so that this didn't l sort of go to a developer sale and then languish again for another <coughs> several years time. And it's sort of mentioned, but the specificity of it, is that going to be in the LDA? Yes. Where, you know, within six. one year, your your shovel's in the ground, within three years, you're done. So, well, How do we make that happen through this? Well, How that's we going to be negotiable, but it's addressed that it's a requirement in, in, in item six. Yeah, I saw that, and I, I think. Well, six is deleted. It, it well, it's crossed four, out. Four, five, and six are. Six. 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 Next page, Michael. Page 17, Tom. And R. And the LDA, LDA is going to be negotiated based on what the, the program is. It's a little confusing, but. Yeah. Um, so the construction schedule will have that sort of from start to completion. But the other thing that was struck that I thought we wanted in here was a reversion of the interest for the failure to complete the development. Why we, did that get taken so out? So we talked about that today. And I can pretty much, if you put a reversion in there, you're not going to get any bid, bids. It's going to chill the bidding process, OK? Because you're asking, they won't be able to get their project financed. Right. I mean, you're asking for someone to make a commitment, and if they have a hiccup, and right. we talked about this the other day, um, they have a hiccup, you know, a year in, and there's twenty million dollars invested. How are you gonna How are you gonna revert on that? Right. You got to find. You got a bank. You got a bank in there that's funding the funding the <coughs> development. Okay. So a revert. The, the, the reverter um, will, the, any lender that's going to come in and say, okay, well, I'm, I'm lending you the money to build this. I'm going to have a first lien on the uh, site. Well, the reverter puts, puts them in, in so a second right, position. Second. That's not going to happen. 
I think we need to have some language in there that protects the town in the event a developer and a bank with a first lien doesn't move forward on it. I mean, a bank isn't going to have a vested interest in leaving it like that either. So, but I think we need to have some sort of right of the town to either reacquire well, it or... What, what, what this development... What's this development agreement is doing? Okay. Um, it's it's holding developers' obligations to develop the property. You're not going to close on it. We're not allowing him to take title to the property until he's got his financing in place. And he's got his building permit ready to go. Okay. It's part of our score. Yeah. I but see you're selling this. Yeah. You're selling this. Yeah. So it's out of your hands. That's it's out of your hands. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now if you Try, if you ask a developer in a bank or an investor to say, okay, well, we want, we got to give the town of North Reading $3 million to the land, but if we have problems, they can take it back. That, that's a problem. Yeah. And so the attorney had that in, put, he actually added it into the, and we, we talked through that today. And, and so, the, the, what we what we came from from that reverta, so we backed off the reverta position, and we put these requirements, the obligations to develop the property. It's it's the, the LDA is going to survive the deal, right? And it's going to be like it's it, it's a it, it's a covenant of what can be built on the site. Yeah, and I, I had th my other point to you was it, it should, I think it, some sort of language in there. My familiarity with LDA is a, is, a revert, is a reverter in the manner of a right of first refusal, but it's with something that's already built. But this is different where it's a proposal. But I think we should have some protection in there, at least that the LDA is recorded and binding on any, you know. Protecting of what, though? What are you afraid of? It's the same thing happening that, you know, it's left there vacant. The same thing happening that occurred before. Because we heard so much of that being an issue. Well, I guess if that was totally left. What happened with if, if somebody got into such financial shape that they couldn't pay the taxes on it, it would end up like we do with any other property. Right. Eventually taking. No, but if, if the project stalls out for whatever reason, again, the bank is going to be your, your first line of defense because they've got most of the bank or whoever the investors right. are, first line of defense in relation to keeping the project going and making a determination whether or not the uh, borrower and developer is still worthy of the project and the money. And the banks are going to do one of two things. They're either going to prop the person up and put a project manager in place and get through the thing, you know, or they're going to take it away. You know, because they've defaulted and then sell it off to somebody else in order to complete the project, you know, or they're going to sit and blank. Like just add to your point there, right? Yeah. So they sell it off subject to that covenant. Subject to that. No, no, subject to what was already been approved. No, subject to the approved plans. So then they, if any modifications so are going to come in, they're going to have to come to the town and ask for the modifications anyway. Right. So that's your, that's your protection. You know, so but uh, but then the, you know, the, the, the third one is, uh, I've seen it over the years, where the, the developer and the banks, both languish, and the, and the project sits there and stagnates and is incomplete too. But it's uh, a pretty expensive thing, though. For no the, kidding. For, for it to yeah. sit. So I've uh, seen lots of those. It's that would last for a long time. And again, the only aid protects the uh, ultimate goal of the town to get the project they approve. Right. Well, no, right. And, and, and the key, key component is we're not just selling the land, then they go get the permits and happen. So you're not giving up title to the land until the project's ready to go. So you basically right. shovel ready with your finance. Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, I've learned that deals can blow up. They happen to me, right? But mm -hmm. you know, the likelihood in a strong market is if it's ready to go, it's ready to go. Yeah. And yeah. that's not what happened with Gutierrez. No. They came in with all their design stuff and showed the, U the reuse board but the state just picked them for the most money if, if they had a, a decent design, but they weren't held to do that design. And they didn't, there was nothing recorded with that that they were going to design it that way. And i.e., they sold it. Well, they didn't sell it. They only had options to buy it. And they built the... the yeah, they sold the option. The, they sold the option, a portion of it, retained the option on the other portion of correct. it with the same intent 
of, of going forward in hopes that the market would change, right. and it didn't. And it didn't. It didn't. So they walked away and left two million bucks on the table in the state. But uh, and so, but that that was over a protracted period of time. I yeah. Mean, that was. Sure yeah. was. And let's go back yeah. to your, your point that you made earlier about the 180 days. So they don't get their permits in 100. Say they say they slack off and don't get their permits. You could terminate the deal. They don't perform. So if you got. If you, in, in the case where you designated a developer, they tie it up and they don't do anything, yeah. you terminate. So you're not, we're not, and that was, that was, a, that control. was a big thing about this is that yeah, we put a, we put a, a time, a yes. definite time frame to make yeah. them perform and not just tie up your land for three or four years. Okay. Does that, does that help? It definitely, I, I sort of understood that when, when Mr. O'Leary was asking you earlier why you, why it was written that way. Mm -hmm. um, because I thought the timeline was pretty tight, pretty too. Tight. Yeah. But if everything has to be in order before we engage in the transaction, that makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's all I had for questions. That's it. All good questions. Michael? Mr. Chairman, just on a point that you brought up to, to kick off the conversation, uh, just, Fran, could you clarify for us when in the process, and there was a slide that we had up there just a moment ago, it talked about the timelines, but when in those timelines would be, in your estimation, the time we would be going to town meeting? And the reason I ask this is because we have the turnaround time to obviously advertise for and organize a town meeting, which is, you know, for all intents and purposes, probably a month, maybe three. maybe three weeks. But then we also have the, the corresponding period of time afterwards where we're waiting for the Attorney General to approve any bylaw change, which is another up to 90 days okay. and they generally take most of that and I'm just trying to understand how that all fits together to make sure that that, okay. that all will work. Let's just walk through the time frame sure. data, data visions. Sure. So we issue the RFP. We have the RFP out for 60 days. We get proposals. Then we have our evaluation period. So we have 60 days to um, my review, the EDC's evaluation, their recommendations, and they bring it to the Board of Selectmen to uh, designate or do a BAFO and then designate. So that's 60 days. That's the 1st of February. Yep. Um, the, we, we have it because we added the development agreement in, there's another 60 days to do the purchase and sale agreement and development agreement. Okay? That's... 1st of that, March. That, the 1st of April. That gets you to the 1st of April. Yeah. Um, then they have a 60-day due diligence till they know you're hot, June 1st. So... Um, it, depending, depending on where where this goes with the developer, um, if my recommendation is, I would wait to schedule a, a town meeting until you know that they've gotten through the due diligence. Right. Because you don't want to go through you don't want to go through a, a, a town meeting and, and have them pull the deal because they didn't like the environmentalism. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at we're up to June first mm -hmm. to where we know we have a deal. Okay. I think what Michael's referring to, though, is that, so let's say there's a monthly time to schedule a town meeting, mm -hmm. and that's submitted because the bylaw changes to the Attorney General, who has 90 days, and sometimes has taken longer, mm -hmm. to approve those bylaws. Okay. So, so our agreement allows, gives us about a year to close. We've got 180 days, and we have two 90-day extensions in. Okay. In our, okay. with the, so it could be in that period we'd be doing it. Is, yeah. our, is the 90 day extension at our option or mutual agreement? It's, uh, I have, it, that's a good question. I believe it's our I option. I probably have it as a developer's um, option if if he has a, see I had I had that language in the uh, standard purchase and sale agreement, which was removed, but it would be, um, you know, if they're, if they're acting in good faith and in, in due diligence and, and that's usually the requirement we have, if they, if at the end of 100 days they haven't filed for the permits yet, there's a problem. Right. And then we have the option to Yeah. And it, so if they haven't acted in, in, in you know. No, no, I did just to, to the town administrator's point as far as the, the attorney general's and office and um, you know, we the town also has the, has the ability to say, well, we'll extend to allow for that. D does it have to be by mutual agreement? I guess um, that's my concern. Whereby you know, I mean, we can get we get hung up because we're in a muni municipality. It takes us a little longer to get things done and decided. Not just here, but when it goes to the the state level, they're on their own time schedule. Right. Uh, 
No, and I understand. So that needs to be factored in and assured and that, 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 that that doesn't give someone an out without mm -hmm. right. and in and their deposit. You know, they, they get out, they get out, they give up their 5% or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And, uh, so you have the ability to negotiate that in the purchase and sale agreement, depending. If, so if you select someone that needs to go through that process, I think that's something to address. Okay? If you have someone that comes in with a proposal that's, un, that's allowed under current zoning and you don't have to go to town meeting. That's not an issue, right. Yeah. But we, we, for the sale partnership model date, and we have till December. And I think we'll have a, another June town meeting, another October town meeting. October one would kill us, but if we had to deal with it in June, I think we'd still be okay. Yeah, and you'll, you'll have proposals in. Maybe maybe you do do a change for that because you like what the concept is. Right. Not you can do a change, not necessarily that's going to accommodate the developer. It could be a use that no one thought of and said, you know what, let's do that because it's not just that site that you were looking at. Yeah. You're looking at the zone. Do just that site, that right. spot zone. Yeah. So it may be a use that you think makes sense for the commercial, uh, the industrial commercial, and you, you move forward then. You know, that's that's what's great about, you know, hopefully we're going to get the development community give us some proposals that we're not thinking about, and, and then sort of see how, how we can make that work. If it's not in the zoning, it's allowed, right? <laughs> you want to sign on? Don't need a change. <laughs> okay. No questions. CPC. Any questions? Do you want to talk about the decision to request? I mean, I think we touched on it, but the removal from from the warrant just just officially. Yeah. I can't hear you, Danielle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all, uh, what you talked about is the removal of from from the warrant of the. Uh, uh, amendment to change the zoning bylaws. Uh, I understand that there's resistance to to uh, just making the changes at this time. So um, obviously the idea, the reason that we put those brought those forth was to uh, encourage uh, proponents of people that might bring forth things on the RFP to to be a little more expansive in their in their view of what could happen here. Uh, keeping it uh, the way it is. I think the point is that uh, Gutierrez had this property for quite a long time, and they certainly are a company that had their finger on the pulse of the development community, and they were unable to put something together under the current zoning. So what we were looking to do is to enhance that zoning some and open it up a little bit and give so, so that somebody that reviewed this RFP and looked at the zoning that we had proposed would be, um, would, you know, look a little more expansively on it, as I said, to, to, to think maybe of a, of a new use of this, this use that he's talking about, a use we haven't thought of, and that maybe they might. Um, however, I don't have any uh, objection to leaving the zoning as it is for right now. Um, and I, I, I understand the, the um, inclination to change the will to May, uh, although uh, someone, a developer who reads that might say, um, they may, but that means that means they may not. But they, but, but if we say that we will review it, we will take a look at an, a zoning change. I think that again, as a, that's a reinforcement that we're that we're willing to to look at something a little different than what just is on the sure. on the uh, in the zoning book right now. So I, I listen to that discussion and, and I, I understand the concept there, but I wonder if we're now getting so far back that we're saying, hey, well, we're not really not going to listen to anything other than what current zoning is. And after all the time and money that Gutierrez put into that current zoning to no avail, is that the right move? I don't think that was our intent at all. Well, that's what was discussed. I, I oh, no, no, that was discussed tonight. You mean as far as the will of the May? Yeah, no, I, I have no problem with it saying we will do it because, I mean, if they're the successful bitter, so to speak, we're certainly going to. We, we will, we will do it. it. We'll consider doing it. Yeah, but you we can we, reject we, all proposals. Right, we can reject right. all proposals. Always yeah. say we will do it. Right. Right. I was actually going to bring it up when we got down to this, that you know, I had a chance to really think about it, and I'd rather leave it in there as well, because we've all, everybody in this room has talked about our willingness to listen and yeah, to exactly. go back and reconsider. So exactly. why wouldn't we help go ahead and say it? I think by saying May, I think we do soften our position. I think it actually weakens the opportunity to get more proposals. Yeah, and I think it also dovetail, dovetails into the other discussion we had the other night in relation to proposing right. some zoning changes, which actually is sending a different message than what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, if you're willing to withdraw that one one article for that 
district and, and, and let, let the things fall where they, where they may so that we yes. will consider it. Yeah. Uh, if we, let's if do we it. say we will consider it, that, 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 that also uh, leads me to, to right. be uh, willing to withdraw this because um, uh, it, is, it is true that <coughs> trying to make a zoning change in the process of an RFP probably is a little confusing. <coughs> it might not be the best move. Right. Um, we maybe should have thought about this one a little further, a little earlier and made some changes earlier. Uh, so that when we put this RFP out, we had a little, uh, a little more latitude in it than we have with this current zoning. So, <coughs> so yeah, I, I believe we'd be willing to to remove that article for now or pass over it as it were, and um, um, and let's see what we get. But I think changing that, I think leaving that may as a will is a good idea. Okay, not to belabor the point, but I have, I have it in two places in this RFP. So we had it as will in, in the introduction. And then in the, in, in the end of the zoning, we said the town may elect to call a special town meeting to address any changes in the zoning required. So, because if we, the timing is not, uh, and I think it was pointed out, the timing is not really all that bad, <coughs> that we could have something together for the June meeting, which yeah. would probably work out just fine yeah. with the time frames that we have with the due diligence and everything. So, yeah. so I just want to point out that it's also in there, and it's a man. Yeah. But since it's one, you will consider and you may have a, may have a special. Well, we may or may not, so that, that, that's legitimate. Okay. Well, you might want to, again, expand upon that statement by saying, you know, uh, unless the annual town meeting sure. is timely. That way there, what we're saying, we're willing to consider a special town meeting if necessary, but we'll bring it up in a regular session and I, and if I it works. We can, we can sell that through the pre-development, pre-bid conference. We can okay. talk about that. Yep. Maybe not put as much in here and talk about it. Hmm. Say really... That's where I can say stuff, and you know, I discount everything I say in a pre, pre big conference anyway. So, but it, it's, that's part of the sales. Mr. Frisco, just briefly, uh, Mrs. Bailey, you did send me a message. I just, I actually saw it this evening when I came in. About you had a question, a follow-up question from our workshop. And and it was in regards to the one mile, three mile, and five mile radius study that you did. And I believe the question that you had asked was, did you look at it from a different perspective where the people from North Reading go all the way to Ando North Andover to shop at Butcher, at the Butcher Boy and, and things like that? Was that kind of a uh, thought process taken into account? Okay. So what, what, when we did the market study, that's a very good question. And we didn't, we didn't do that type of regional analysis. What we did was rely, we relied on the findings of the MAPC study that was done, and they did a quite quite extensive um, market analysis for baskets of retail goods on a five minute and ten minute drive ratio from your uh, Main Street uh, 28 corridor. It was from those findings that we, we it showed that the town of North Reading in that radius could accept about 40,000 square feet of potential new retail. Which is huge. Um, yeah. th and that's sort of that's sort of what our finding that when, so when we looked at this site, we said, well, based on that, because this site's not that far away, that the, the Berry site could grab some of that retail need. And that, that's sort of how we, 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 um, we judge the retail market over there. You know, there's not a lot around there, but the corridor from Main Street to, to, to 93 does have traffic. And they get about 20,000 cars a day over there. So. We, that's how we judge that there could be some retailers interested in the site. You know, we talked about um, highway convenience type of stuff, more impulse. <laughs> I know you have to get bigger. And, and it's, it's um, you never know in a bid process, someone could come in. The guys, the big guys that do this stuff, we're going to Valley, they're not going to, they're, they're not going to show their cars if the things are not, you know, and they'll show up. Um, and plus, we're not fishing on market. Yeah. So, you know, if everybody who has a New England development is going to put 300,000 square feet of retail over there and do a lifestyle center, we wouldn't be talking about this 2,780,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, there's this strategy involved in this too. But, you know, from the studies, it shows that it's, high, it's, it's, not, it's unlikely to, to attract that, but you never know. Okay. Would it be of any advantage to us to share that MAPC report with potential developers or not? Uh, In other words, should we document. be steering them to it or not? Yeah, it's on our website. Yeah. No, I know it's on the website, but 
does it help? Yeah, what do you think any of the applicants that have come in lately to us that are looking to develop properties in the town of North Reading, we've referred them to that study as, a, as a, if they've been un, unclear about what it is they're going to do actually. So we, um, what we've done is refer them to that as a way of seeing what the town uh, is looking for so that they can help them look for uh, clients or look for people so who might use their property. So during your, was it, was it called a pre, what? Pre bid. Yeah. yeah. Pre bid. Uh, yeah. Is that going to be part of your pitch? Yeah, I can do that in there. Better not to include it in I there because you don't know if there's anything wrong in there. No, I know, but I just Definitely. as far as a reference. Uh, Definitely. Right. When they call and apply with you, Danielle, I think that's one of the things we have on the list that you can refer them to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, based on the discussion tonight, do both committees feel more comfortable now to give the the approval to go to the final on this so we can get it out on the street or do we need more time I'm comfortable yeah, I think I think it's uh, I think it's time to put it out there because uh, I don't see any sense in waiting and you know one of the things right now is if the uh, Fed decides to start raising rates that's going to change the way some of the business people look at these things too and that's that's coming down the road I think so so it's probably, uh, timing is probably pretty critical right now. If we can get somebody interested, uh, the sooner the better. I mean, again, my only concern was I didn't have the opportunity to review the revisions, and I don't know, I'm flipping through some of it now, you know, how substantive they were. <coughs> uh, and, and I guess the, um, for what you're saying is, most of what was changed was changed at your suggestion in order to enhance the process and yep. expand the field of interest. Yes, to help make it more marketable. Right. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and it was even the lawyer, when we talked about what we we're trying to do here, <coughs> the lawyer said, okay, yeah, that makes sense. What are you trying to do? Which Who else was in on the conference that? call no, with you? Stop uh, saying that. Um, Take okay. that out. And as far as the changes, you're comfortable you with the final product yeah. in relation to That's marketability? And I think what we had here is um, there was quite a bit of effort that Fran put into this um, to try to have a, an RFP together to reflect all of the conversations that have, that have taken place over the past couple of months both in this forum, I think in July it might have been, and then with the EDC. And then we gave it to town council. We said, you know, go through this, make sure it's legal. And um, they looked at it, and there were a number of things that they were looking to do that uh, I think would have made it a bit more restrictive. Uh, but when we had a conversation about the nature of the transaction and some of the, 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 the very beginning principles of why we were getting into this transaction, which go, go back to the summer of 2014 at a time when he was not working with us on his transaction, I think we addressed many of his concerns, which caused him to say, okay, that change that I suggested to you, you know, don't bother going forward with that change. So there was a document that was given to us on uh, Friday, went in the Dropbox on Saturday or very early Sunday morning. And, um, you know, town council had suggested that there'd be some changes be made to that document. When we had the conference call today, the consensus was that the most of the changes were not needed. Right. Um, just for the board members to note, though, I mean, the, I think if you you scroll through, you should see that the changes are tagged in a blue color yes. yeah. in there, so you should be able to see what they are. And it looks like uh, every one of them came through um, in there. But um, I, I believe that uh, the, the version that we got back at 5:09 this evening, whatever time it was, is probably the one that's in the best interest of the town based on the conversations that we've had over the past few months. So the long and short of it is yes. Yeah. So yeah. That, that being said, yeah, go for it. Uh, you should have been on an email from uh, from them, and but that's not what you <laughs> I think it's probably mo are most of the changes accepted then. Uh, yes. 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 Oh, yeah, ours wasn't. Okay. Ours isn't okay. accepted changes. Yours yeah. doesn't have ours all the changes accepted then probably. Proposed. Right. What you have is it. That, I mean, that, that's okay. it. I, that's company. So <laughs> they may not have it, but you have it. This would definitely <laughs> need to be modified because it has to needs dates in it. Yes. Well, we just we wanted to have the both committees 
say jointly yes, say right. yes yeah. before we yeah. did any more. You know, I think the EDC mm -hmm. has done all they could do. Francis, I believe you've done all you can do. I think you know it falls with us now to make a decision. Okay. So this is sort of the most cleaned up version. It still needs a little bit of cleanup, but this is substantive. I think yeah. So is the intent is the intent now to based on our discussions tonight, based on what's been floating around with the attorneys, is to clean this up and then do we have to vote on it? We've put a motion in the, uh, the, the package yeah. before. I, Ms. I would like us to vote. Ms. Yeah. Ms. Okay. I mean, some level of indication that the majority of the vote supports. That was the, one of the, the additional uh, motions. It was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Again, just to do the personal circumstances, that we weren't able to have that motion on Friday. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah I got to go back. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? I would suggest it. Mr. Uh, Ewell is trying to get your attention. Mr. Yes, Mr. Ewell. Yes. Uh, with what we're looking at uh, tonight, um, it needs to be pulled together and be in finished format so that we can vote on it. Because if we vote on it now as it is, it can come back to us inadvertently, of course, incorrectly, uh, or with a mistake here and there that we don't catch, but it's already been voted upon. So I would think that what we want to do is have it finalized and presented so we can vote on it and we're meeting next Monday, so we should probably do it do it then. Because otherwise someone's gonna have to put this together and we're vulnerable to a uh, a mistake. It's not a finished product. I'm open <laughs> Mr. I, I disagree. Uh, I think there's been a tremendous amount of work on both sides with legal counsel's review with Francis's input in discussion with League Council, with Danielle, also obviously actively involved in that process, the town administrator actively involved in that process. I think we have a very good handle on what needs to get changed based on the discussions this evening. And we have a good way forward right now. We have a solid RFP. There's no need to wait another week. And then that means we have to post another joint meeting for the CPC to drag them back here again to do what we're all gonna do anyway. And let's approve this. Why would, let's not waste another week. I understand, Mr. Yu, your concerns, but I, I have a lot of confidence, especially with legal counsel involved and the subject matter experts involved and Danielle being involved. Not that you're not a subject matter expert, but I, you know, you've been managing the process. And um, I think we're ready. Let's not waste any more time. I hope my other fellow board members support taking a, a motion tonight on this. Where's the CPC on this issue? We're ready to vote. We're ready to vote on it. Ready to vote? Yes. All right, we'll entertain the motion. We'll see what the vote is. Mr. Chair. Mr. Yes. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I don't think we disagree. I mean, apparently we've decided what we want to do, but we're not looking at a finished product, and you're going to vote on something that has lines in it that's crossed out and some, you know, changes that have been made, all right, and doing that, uh, we will have voted on something that will be amended after we voted on it. And that's a concern that I would have, okay? I, I think I'm if not we, so uh, sure I look at it quite that same way. Well, I mean, it, 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 we are amending it, no? We are making changes to it, right? The, We're, it's gonna the, leave our hands, it's gonna come back the, in a different- The couple totally of different. changes are very slight, as I recall. I, I, don't, know, I don't know I that there's gonna be any changes. We don't, I think any, of the, I think we don't have a finalized version yet, yeah. so I don't think it's, we, this just came in three hours ago. But and my initial concern, yeah. There's no yeah. dates or anything <laughs> on it. Are we supposed to be putting those in tonight in a vote, or are we gonna see this? There's even strike throughs here. This isn't the final RFP going out. Yeah, but, this no. <laughs> so, but I, think, the, uh, I think what we have is, is uh, the it, it just shows the changes that were made. This, what was taken a out a few hours ago, right? Uh, yes, but that's what we talked about all yeah. evening here. Just convert it to the cost yeah, to get your attention. Chairman, can I just take out the red lines? G generally, blue I, I lines represent anyway. a lot of public agencies. So uh, generally, you know, when we deal with things like that, we I came here tonight to show you the terms of in general not you know the, 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 the every detail in here 
And generally what happens is boards direct um, their staff to deal with the final final um, amendments because what, what's left to be done in here is to fill the dates in. Couldn't fill the dates. The reason I left them blank is because I didn't want right. I need to know when, when I can do this, okay? Um, it, one thing that concerns me about this conversation is if we need to make amendments to this RFP, does that, where does that process go? Where is the okay. So generally, staff, the staff of the public agency that I work for is, is uh, empowered to make the, the minor changes. Um, so, I, and I don't necessarily know your protocol here, but I think on this document right now, we're talking about adding the dates in and, 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 and going. I know it's Cleaning a redline it. document. Cleaning it up. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's actually any real changes to this because that's where the motion's written. It's written just to give approval to submit the send out, you know, to approve an RFP and then it leaves it to the town administrator to get that job done with his team. Right. And you're as the team. As amended. As amended. Mm -hmm. What are we amending? There's no there, I, I, I don't have any amendment that we're even considering though. What are we talking about amendments for? Well, I, I think where the confusion came in is that we had Mr. Mr. Center was the Holder town Steve. council had a conversation. Steve, hold it. Mr. Manifelli. Yes. No. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> Through you. <laughs> promote it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's getting late. Oh, the, my God. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the, it's not uncommon that we'll have a, a document that goes forward and we've hold, held a template there and, and the template that's been held are the dates and the reason for that is because there are timelines associated with notifying <coughs> the central register that we are uh, excuse me the goods and services bulletin or the central register that we're advertising that's an eight or nine day lead time and then that triggers the 60 day window so it's okay. until we know for certain that we're, we're ready to proceed it's not uncommon for us <coughs> not to have that type of information in here in terms of what we would go forward with the document that's in Dropbox that I referenced at the beginning of the conversation, um, which shows the text and shows the modifications in blue, those modifications would be affected. So picture us saying, accept changes. Yep. And that'll be the document that goes out. And we will fill in the timeline only in conjunction with the schedule that the Goods and Services Bulletin or the Central Register provide us. I, I think their next publication you, you need to submit Tuesday for the following Wednesday right, right. notice. So there's right. a lead time that's there. Right. That that said, and I said this at the be the meeting in July when we had the conversation. More than anything, we want to make sure that we're that when the EDC comes back to these boards, that there's a consensus that these boards feel that this is what they asked for for proposals, and that that <coughs> the, the the lay of the land is what was expected. That, that's been my concern all along, so that we don't invest the time in this process uh, that's required for it. it. It is lengthy, and come back with something that the selectmen or, to, to, to a certain extent, the CPC weren't asking for. I, I do feel that this document reflects the conversations that we've had, mostly because it does not put into it the caveats of uh, ranking by, by necessarily by use. There are other factors that are in there that the EDC will take and make the determination of use. We didn't prioritize this use will get more, uh, more uh, credit, so to speak. And that was done purposely to allow maximum flexibility. Um, so I understand the concern, and I more than anyone want to make sure that we're, we're all on the same page as to what we're looking for when we go to the market. But I do think when we go out there, the only thing you're going to see that's going to change from the standpoint here is the dates for, for submission. Um, in it. But it's obviously a board decision, and, and I, I do want the board to be comfortable and the CPC as well. Mr. O'Leary, I cut you off. Yeah, no, as far as <coughs> that's because I interrupted somebody. It's okay. So you had every right to cut me off. Yeah. So the, um, uh, again, my first bit of apprehension was I'm sitting here and something gets thrown in the drop box. It was different than what I already reviewed, and I said I wanted to know what the changes were. You know, and as we've been listening and talking, uh, I don't consider them to be substantive, and I don't consider them to be um, of a nature that precludes us from doing anything that we've talked about. So it, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with moving forward to, with the draft as it is right now, with the proposed changes or modifications as agreed to by consultant and, and town council. So, um, yeah, I'm okay. So then it would be as amended? 
That's what you mean by amendment. You mean as, as yeah, a, yeah. I mean, that's what that's that's the amendment. It's just as corrected. Or as, agree, as agreed upon. As agreed as upon. As agreed upon with the, the okay. consultant in town council. So that's how you want the vote to read then. That's okay. So yeah. may I? And then the administration it, is directed oh, to you put in the appropriate dates. <laughs> no, and then the administration is directed to put in the appropriate dates to mm -hmm. effectuate okay. the, yep. the RFP mm -hmm. being put forth or whatever. Mrs. Manipuli. That's you again. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> That's you. Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, Who's who? <laughs> no, I, again, it's certainly the board's decision, oh but uh, generally when I hear the terms as amended, it, it indicates that there's been a change in the discussion of the document. Right. And I don't believe that we are suggesting or recommending no. any change it's agreed. No. to what's what's in the Dropbox, again, the second version of it that was put in. But I, I leave that to the board to decide. The updated, uh, just the updated RFP. Perhaps that's, that's yeah. been reviewed See, this uh, evening. Uh, is that updated RFP? We all know what that is. And we just can't look really the data go wrong the with document that. that's in the the, uh, the updated Dropbox. the the RFP updated as of nine twelve sixteen yeah. that we've reviewed and discussed at this evening's mm -hmm. meeting. Yep. Does that that's sound right. fine? Mm -hmm. So yep. I move to approve. Of the Economic Development Committee's issuance of the R the updated RFP that we've discussed this evening, updated as of 9 12 16, that we have discussed this evening, for the disposition and redevelopment of the JT Berry Lowell Road property. Second. Second by Mr. Prisco. With respect to the board, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. <laughs> Are there amendments what? in it? <laughs> the joint meeting. <laughs> oh, so should I? Yeah, we have it as roll call vote. It's generally we've handled the Mr. Yeah, Chair if it's a single. I'm sorry, okay. That's okay. Yeah. So we just call the roll for the CPC. <coughs> yeah. CPC. Right. So the BOS members were so unanimous. I just call the roll for uh, John. Yes. 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 And I say yes. Unanimous. And Mr. Vino is absent. One absent on there. Mr. Vino is absent. Oh, I'm Vino's sorry. Absent. Okay. Vino's absent. And on the board, we want to just follow the protocol with the roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary? Yes. Mr. Yule? Yes. Mr. Manapelli? Yes. Mr. Prisco? Aye. Chair votes aye. Okay. <sighs> thank you. Thank you. Francis, once again, thank you for your patience. And, uh, Okay. Is, is there anyone left here for public comment? I guess not. Good good work. Work. Out. Thank you for your comments. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. So I just recorded Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So. Okay. We have the minutes of August 22nd. Just as a note, uh, the uh, we passing over the minutes of March just 28th. Mr. Chairman, just before we move forward, just, just let the chairman of the CPC know, Warren will be withdrawing that article, not passing it over, withdraw the article. We haven't gone to print on the warrant. We have, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's okay to withdraw it. Okay. And what we'll do is if we do, if we do have an applicant that, that needs it, we do have the June meeting, and if not, if we haven't had good responses, then we may look at, uh, bringing something around to the Zoom meeting to encourage responses on a further RFP. Okay, on the minutes, on the March 28, 2016 executive session. No, we're passing over that. I know, but it's in our warrant, so uh, on our agenda, I just want to make a note oh, that sorry, we are okay. passing over that. Yes. Mrs. Manapelli, August 22nd, regular session. Um, I have a, I can do this. I have a correction to make on this. Should I do this now? or Is it to? minor? I think so. Well, let's, yeah. let's, we'll pass it as amended. What's the correction? In the um, second and third page discussion, uh, there was inquiry at the meeting by the, the license holder, Mr. Pendleton. And there's a distinction between what, what is said in here and what was actually said at the meeting. And he inquired about his license and he thought he had a one year period. And what was made known to him is if the board revokes it, a new license can't be applied for at that premises for a year after that revocation. And then in inquiring about how long he has, the board gave him 60 days, but that's 
it, it's really a cancellation process that the board goes through versus a revocation process. And there's a distinction because it, a cancellation is because the business ceases to use it and a revocation would prevent any other business from coming forward to the board. So that was made known at that meeting. I remember the specific inquiry being about that and him actually mentioning a one-year period. So it's not reflected here. It looks like we're gonna proceed with a revocation, which I don't think we told him. I think we gave him 60 days. To give us an update. Yeah, to give us yeah. an update on if he had some sort of other applicant. So I don't think we made it known we were gonna proceed with a revocation hearing. I think it was more of a cancellation hearing. We have to know, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Gilberto told him we'd have to have a show cause hearing on that. It's for a cancellation of the license because his business has ceased, ceased to occur. So I don't know how you can capture that, but it, that should be amended to reflect that. That's, you know, well, what we So I'll ask said. this question. If, if Jane, you feel comfortable with making that change? Um, what if I not, I will pass it over and maybe Catherine can get together with yeah, you. Yeah. It, it easily That's is good. just uh, Mr. The board could schedule show cause to potentially cancel the license because of lack of lack of the business. The business ceases to exist. Could be some very minor thing, but I don't think we were initiating a revocation. No, no. I, through you, Mr. Chairman, I think that the intention that we conveyed was give them 60 we just rejected the transfer we're going to give them 60 days to figure out what's next mm -hmm. if they didn't submit something that 60 days would elapse they would be in front of us and we would say what's the plan yes and if they didn't right. have an answer we may schedule a revocation show, uh, cancellation show cause here. cancellation, show cause cancellation that's here. all it's not a big thing but it is a we we'll, probably want to reflect that we're not trying to revoke it we'll um we'll consult and okay. maybe talk with you offline so between we these. pass this over then well, that'd be my recommendation. Is that August Pass over. Is that, that August 22? Yes, Mr. I was going to ask, actually ask this question under old business, but this is actually one of the reasons I wanted to ask the question was I was a little confused on Mr. Pendleton's request because the town has an existing liquor license we can grant right now, right? If we wanted to, if a business came in, a new we business wanted to open, we, we have some available, right? For beer and wine? Yes. Oh, we have? Yeah, I believe oh, on, on the, the beer and wine, but on not, not on a pouring license. Correct. Okay. Correct. Not on the pouring, 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 pouring license. Okay. Available, I think okay. on the beer and wine. Are. That's correct. Okay. Because that, that one was he's holding out as a beer and wine. It's correct. a retail. All right. So it's his. He's yeah, so the so one that has the beer and Package store and beer and wine, I think, were maxed out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pouring licenses were not. Thank you. Mr. Chair? I mean, so the, we're going to pass over. Mr. Yeah, I just want to, uh, the, we're, we're maxed out on the beer and wine, but this establishment is holding one of those. Yes. Okay. At least till the end of the year. Right. He's trying he to sell He has to have a location in order to, to renew it, and he doesn't have one. You know, and if he's going to move it to a different location, he'll be subject to a hearing here. So, it's till the end of the year. That's right. Yeah. So we have... We're passing over the uh, August 22nd regular for our next meeting. That would be my recommendation. Okay. And we'll just work the Then we have out. an executive session for August 22nd. Can we do that? This motion. Mr. Matter Pelly? Joel misses me. Is this another one? Is this, is this the no, the motion's right. Oh, oh it's that simple. So okay. Mr. Yol Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the August 22nd. 2016 executive session minutes as written. So here a second. Okay. Second by Mr. Presco. All in favor? Uh, excuse me. I was not present at the meeting, executive was, or otherwise. I was not. So present. therefore, I will be abstaining. Okay. Me too. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Aye. Abstaining. You too, Chris. Okay. Mr. Two Larry abstentions. Okay. Motion passes three with two ex abstentions. Approve legal bills. Next, we have a motion for that. Do we have a motion for that? There yep. should be a motion to approve the bills. And the original correspondence, I think, right? And, and then. Not the new one? The new one should have had the one too. As well. So okay. the old one. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for July 2016 in the amount of $7,995.44 as follows. Kobelman and Page, PC General, $3,369.44. Kobelman and Page, PC Labor, $4,626 for a total of $7,995.44. Do a hear a second? Second. Second on Mr. Yu. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Unanimous. We have a vote to approve the purchase and sale of 9 Mill Street. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I believe we're going to pass over that. Mm hmm. Yep. Pass over. Not ready for it. We will be covering this next week. I think that's the plan, yes. Yes. Okay. Discuss October town meeting. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, you see the first uh, draft of the town meeting warrant here in the, uh, the packet. And uh, right up front, for full disclosure, it is pending review with town council at this time for any uh, adjustments that he may recommend. Um, it's also uh, once reviewed here, uh, from a substance standpoint from the board, will circulate it to department heads for any other input. Uh, they won't be able to submit new warrant articles at this point in time, but they just will be providing right. comment. We'll um, be removing the CPC article. I believe it's Article 13 that we've discussed removing mm -hmm. the zoning bylaw relative to the um, zone that includes 102 and 104 Lowell Road uh, industrial office zoning, if I understand correctly. So that, uh, based on the, uh, there's been a request to withdraw. I presume that the I don't know if the wants to vote to to remove based on that request to withdraw or not. Uh, clearly, we understand the intention, but yeah, Mr. Chairman, I move to um, honor the request of the Committee Planning Commission to withdraw Article 13 uh, from the October Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could yes. also just offer a, a suggestion in relation to the final article, which is article currently numbered 16, 16 which will now be 15, uh, I think it would be more appropriate to, uh, to uh, consider that after article 6, the operating budget. Uh, so maybe if we just want to renumber it and yeah. put that uh, and let the less the rest of them just flow. Let the rest of them flow after that. Okay. Do we hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Anything else, Mr. O'Leary? Um, just in relation to. Article 8. Um, I move to remove Article 8 from the October Town meeting warrant. Second. Relative to, the Rel relative to uh, appropriate money for construction of facilities at the Arthur J. Excuse me, I'm sorry, not Article 8. I, I apologize. Article 9. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, Article 9. Uh, fund irrigation and landscaping for middle school, high school athletic fields. I apologize. So, Article 9. I'll I move second to. that one also. Discussion? Yes. Uh, can you just give us a little reason or just? Sure. Financial planning team. First of all, you know, obviously I wasn't, uh, I wasn't present at the meeting. Uh, I was out of town the last meeting and uh, I did have a chance to watch it on YouTube, uh, watch our meeting. And so, so a couple of things. First of all, uh, I, I think it's, it was a little bit premature. And secondly, I think some of the things that were said were untrue uh, in relation to uh, the chairman's action and my action at the financial planning team meeting. Um, we did not arbitrarily and inappropriate in any appropriate way. Uh, first of all, we didn't bring it up. And secondly, we didn't, uh, didn't state that they were never going to get considered. Um, just to review what, <clears throat> what transpired and brought this about was, uh, I think it was back in July, uh, Mr. Prisco, you... Uh, brought up under all the new business the uh, proposal to cover a potential fifty thousand uh, dollar shortfall in the in the in the project uh, we had some some discussion about it and 
talked about the challenges that were uh, coming about in relation to the fundraising and the bid process and bid opening. Uh, that same week, um, we were going to we were going out to bid on it, but open the bid, so we didn't even know what the shortfall was. That was based the fifty thousand was based upon uh, the first bid proposals that we went out and got, and then direct relation as to what was what was raised. Um, so I mean, then the shortfall. Once I don't know, three three days later, four days later, when the when the bids finally came in, the shortfall was closer to thirty thousand dollars instead of instead of the fifty thousand dollars. But I think what's important to note is that again, I'm on the secondary school building committee. I'm on the athletic uh, facility subcommittee. Uh, the athletic facility subcommittee, which is uh, spearheading the the effort, and the members of that committee spearheading the effort to raise the funds necessary to bring about the irrigation in middle school fields have never had a discussion it was never an agenda item never had any discussion in relation to requesting the town to put in any money um, has never taken a position requesting it uh, the intent from the beginning was for private funds to pay for it there was also a, a misimpression left that it was something that was, you know, left out of the project, the school project. It was never contemplated to be in the school project. It was not an oversight, as you stated. It was never intentionally, it was never even looked at as far as an irrigation. It wasn't because it was an oversight. It was because the cost of the project, first of all, this would not have been reimbursable uh, by the state. Uh, secondly, if you recall, we had to go back and get an extra $15 million, and we cut about $5 million out of the proposal um, in order to bring about the, the facility that we're currently about to complete. And, uh, enjoy uh, so it was never part of the proposal uh, the proposal was to uh, seed the field uh, recognizing that it was, it was going to be seeded this year uh, it was not going to be ready for this fall anyway uh, the the hope was that we would be able to bring about uh, necessary fundraising to potentially have it available for this fall uh, but then again uh, based upon the bidding we fell short. Uh, the subcommittee then voted to go back out to bid, go back out to bid, and the bidding was then split to uh, give us a, a split bid on irrigation and landscaping and separately. Um, a few weeks ago, the subcommittee uh, recommended and voted to move forward with the irrigation and continue to raise funds privately uh, for the sod. Once again, subcommittee never had as an agenda item never was put forth and proposed by any member of the subcommittee at our meetings and never voted on to request funds at town meeting nor was it ever the intention of anybody any, any member to go to town meeting and ask for money uh, there's a whole host of other as the chairman pointed out uh, proposals being put forth such as the money for the construction of the facility at Arthur Kenny Field could be potentially half a million dollars we had someone to, uh, tonight had to dig into $6,500 of their own money, put up some screening you know, as a result of the project. Uh, part of the argument that was proposed was you know, to take care of these, uh, these neighbors. Uh, we haven't had any complaints about, about that field at this particular point in time. Mrs. Carlson, who's been to every single one of our meetings for the last three years, has been looking for screening and other proposals and we haven't got the money to do it, and yet we we're proposing to put up $30,000. Now the gap is currently around $11,000. Um, it's going to be covered. The school department has uh, put forth a proposal to uh, utilize the athletic uh, revolving fund uh, to make up for the shortfall so the side can be done this fall uh, in, in hopes and in anticipation that the private fundraising will continue and we'll reimburse that fund. But again, from a timing standpoint, the school department is stepping up, putting some funds available, make them available so it can get done this fall. So uh, there's no need for it. It was never requested by the subcommittee. And uh, it was never part of the SSPC proposal, and it was not an oversight. Uh, when the question was posed by a member of the uh, financial planning team as to the proposal that you put forth, and again, you didn't talk to the chairman about it, you didn't talk to me as a member of the subcommittee, I don't know if you consulted with any other members of the board, but I think we all kind of act surprised when you initially proposed it. 
um, there was no discussion. You just kind of dropped it in our lap, and you got basically no reaction from anybody here other than we'll take it up for October town meeting potentially at a different time in September. Um, so, uh, again, I think what's unfair is that you're putting forth these proposals and casting aspersions that someone, you know, someone, Mr. Chairman and myself and the chairman, you know, nix this whole thing. There was never a proposal put forth. There was never an article proposed by the subcommittee. And, uh, and you didn't let it run its course. It's now run its course. We're $11,000 short. The school department has figured out a way to do it uh, without anymore. And there's still a commitment on the membership's part to go out and raise the money. So uh, when it was proposed to the Secondary School Building Committee, Secondary School Building Committee agreed to forego the seating. Uh, the contractors were very accommodating in allowing us to uh, put the irrigation in before the uh, sidewalks were, were poured. Uh, so they were very accommodating. And as far as money being available as a result of those savings, there aren't any, there aren't any savings uh, in relation to that. The only thing is saved is saves the contractor time coming back and watering some grass that wasn't going to grow anyway. Um, so there was, there was some trade-offs. Again, we're in the midst of trying to close out the books. Uh, the money is very tight, and we haven't come to a final agreement as far as final figures uh, with the final construction of the, of the schools. And uh, I just wanted, so I think it's, it's unnecessary, and I think it should be removed. So are you making a motion? I did. I, I made a motion that was okay, seconded. Jeff seconded it? Yes. So the evening I brought this up, the action that we were taking was, does anyone else have any other suggestion for articles that we may want to cover? And at the time, it was out there publicly that that project that you guys were undertaking was $50,000 short. That was the number that I heard. And maybe it wasn't exactly 50, maybe it was you know, somewhere between 40 and 50, but that was what I heard. So the discussion that evening was, what other articles do people want to propose? So I proposed it because $50,000 is a lot of money for public funds to come up with. It was just a placeholder to make sure that we don't get all the way through this process and we find ourselves that far short that we cannot f complete those fields as your subcommittee has went off and tried to figure out what they wanted to do with. They spent a lot of time and they come up with the solution of doing the irrigation because we all know nothing will grow there without it. And I don't, I don't believe I ever said it was an oversight of the project. Maybe I did, but did. It, it was an oversight. And I still believe it's an oversight because there was a lot of moving parts in that project and some things are going to get missed. But nonetheless, that was my ultimate goal. And yes, no one here even had a reaction to it. But then to, feel, to get the feedback from members of the financial plan team and come back to me and say, you can take it up with them. I'm just telling you what they came to me on. Okay? Your problem shouldn't be with me. I'm just telling you what what was told I, to me I, from I think them. So the you can take is, it up with them. I think the Hold on, is, I is have the floor, Mr. O'Leary. You said something Mr. public. You said something public. Come on. Mr. O'Leary, I have the floor. And I respect you. I let I'm you sorry. get through I what apologize. you wanted to say. I apologize. So the unfair part is it's unfair that you're attacking me on this because it was it was asked. that I did what I was asked to come up with ideas of other articles that I thought are something that we should have. So and I've been behind the scenes trying my best to try to come up with some more public funds for you. Work, working with other companies, trying to even save that extra, t get that $10,000 back from the savings bank. I'm trying to do this so we don't need this. So all I'm saying, at this point, it, it's great. That it's gone down from 50 now down to 11. And if we can get this other 10, we grant it, we don't need it. But if we need $11,000 to finish, why wouldn't we leave it there? And then we can have another discussion when you know that you may need $11,000. Because it makes sense to finish the project and when the public has stepped up and they've made this great contribution well over a hundred thousand dollars this is the right thing to do irrigation is needed we can't anything we invest in for seeding or sod or whatever will die you can't do this project without it it is an oversight it should have been con considered from day one so that's my rationale why I put this forward Chip, as far as being unfair, what was unfair was that you, you made some statements as to what Mr. Masseri and myself 
supposedly did and how he handled the situation. You didn't talk with me about it. You didn't ask the chairman whether he did or he didn't. You did, chose, a, chose a public forum, forum to chastise us, all right? And that's unfair. Well, because what happened wasn't true. There's no communication on this, there was Mr. O'Leary. There's well, no communication on this. Board. I, I agree. None. I agree. You None. didn't call us. There's you no. Well, you don't call me. You didn't call us. Is, it's been no con no communication this way either. So you know you, what? You, you this is where I'm, I'm going to deal with. So you just know the public. Right, right, everyone right, knows enough. that this so is a anyway, fractured. But in the meantime, okay? as far as so getting don't ever it bring done, communication with me. But as far as, as far as getting it done and getting it done now, as opposed to in the spring, and again, everybody was on board getting it done in the spring so we can raise some more money. Uh, this is at the subcommittee level, um, but the school department has stepped up. They put the funds, made the funds available to get it done this fall. When I brought this up, they had not stepped up. It was still a fifty thousand dollars deficit. No, no, excuse me. I'm talking so about this week. This week, when it came down to the eleven thousand dollars, the school department has agreed to put the money up and encourage the members again to continue raising money and reimburse that fund. And that's that's what they're going to proceed with. That's what's going to be done. The the contract is going to be let this week to do the entire project. So we don't need the money. So again, my motion is to remove Article 9 from the warrant. Why don't you wait a week? Wait, wait one more week. But we already so have it done. But you don't, you're still short. No, no we're not short. Not. The school department is the taking care of it. The school department is taking the money out of the... Uh, athletic revolving fund. Athletic revolving fund. Revolving fund. And we were told that today. They're that taking out of the athletic week. revolving account? Yes. Does that make sense? No. I mean, how are they going to replace that money? With the money that's being raised, they, we, will, they will continue they, to raise they money. They assured us through that the spring, through the year, filling the gap was not a problem. Okay. It's a timing issue, and they solved the timing. I don't issue. know how they can use that money for that, but that's okay. Fine. If that's what you want to do. All right. With I'm that, just happy the deficit isn't $50,000 anymore. Yeah. So well, that's a good I don't thing. And a lot of credit, lot of credit goes to, to right. Marty Tilton Look, and Michael We Connelly have a motion on the hard, table. Working hard to get oh, the number down. We have a motion on the table. It, what it's say, getting late. See if anybody else would like to have anything to say. Well, uh, obviously. Uh, it, I'm not calling for the vote until Jeff and I think both, Kathleen weigh in. I, I do think we both said we, we had a reservation or a hesitation with using any additional public monies. We've already done two overrides on this right. school development. But we were also informed there was some give and take, that this was part of it, but there was some give and take. So, and that wasn't, we weren't informed by Mr. Prisco about that. We inquired about it when this got, when we voted upon this. And it seemed a plausible basis to put it in there, although we were both opposed to going back to more, for more for, public, for, use right. of more public funds for this, because it was still not finalized. The final details is still, a, sum of money out there but also yeah, whatever money was available for through the project is not going to be earmarked and will not go towards this project right. anyway well, it wasn't, wasn't ever going it wasn't ever going yeah, to be right. All right, so that wasn't going to happen right. again this was a request by members of the uh, athletic subcommittee to the secondary school building committee to forego the seating in order to get the irrigation done and then we're going to raise the money privately so it was never going to be never part of the equation but as at the time this article yeah. was proposed we, we didn't have all this information that it's now covered and right. we've got this gap filled and it was a big gap so now covered. Yeah. We know there doesn't seem to be a need for it. Right. At the, at the and time and Michael proposed it, and I suggested that we just put it on, we didn't have the full board, the bids were going to come in, I think, on that Thursday right. after our meeting. <coughs> right. Right. That's right. And we'd have another number, and it was there if it was needed. At today's financial planning team meeting, we were told that the, the problem was resolved and that the timing issue, which you made a big case for, associated with wanting to get that in this fall so that the fields could be used in the spring, right, has been resolved. So to me, it's a dead issue at this point. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Ewell. Yes. Um, at the time it was suggested that we do this, it was uh, also suggested that we do the right thing because people were having issues with dust and there were concerns that uh, it was a health issue and that we should do the right thing. Uh, it, you know, knowing uh, and, and going back to that, that time, you know, I, I did have reservations to it because 
you know, we, we built a school that cost an awful lot of money, and the community was willing to pay for it. But it keeps coming back for more and more and more. And that, I think, is unsuspecting. And at the time, when the suggestion was made, one of the thoughts that I had go through my mind was, you know, it's only 30,000. You know, it's always, always only something. It's only something this. OK. But there are people out there where $30,000 is an awful lot of money. And when it translates into having to pay more taxes, um, uh, we keep adding a little bit here, a little bit there. We, there was a suggestion that we do the uh, Benvenuto baseball fields because the World Series playoffs were going to be there, that we should you know, help them with that. So I get concerned when, when we start throwing around other people's money to, um, uh, for little projects like that. And it should be taken care of uh, by private funds versus uh, um, public funds because there are a lot of people who don't have that kind of money, uh, unfortunately. And uh, when I when I look at it now in this in our situation right now, it seems like the gun was j jumped, and that the the intent might have been well intended, but it, we were jumping the gun on something that was already being taken care of. And uh, again, we was emphasized, do the right thing. And so you know, I I'm glad it worked out. I I'm unfortunately, just it worked, you know, worked out this way. So um, that was my, my concerns back then. And, and those are my concerns that I have now. But I'm glad it did work out, and I appreciate everybody coming up with the private funds to come through, and I appreciate the school for coming through to get it done, make it happen, and uh, move forward. Mr. Just for a Mr. Yule, you can't take snippets of what I said and just use those. When I put this in there, it was a placeholder because the gap was large, and I felt strongly that this project had to be done, and I'm happy that the gap has been closed. So that we'll, we'll end it on that. But the other thing is, you keep mentioning these Benevento fields, and I'm not talking about $1 taxpayer money. We worked with Representative Jones to go out and find a grant for $50,000 to help incre improve those fields for safety as we bring the, the Little League World Series to North Reading. It's not taxpayer money, and the North Reading Little League is going to match some of the funds. Not 100%, but they are going to make a significant contribution fund-wise as well. So it's not taxpayer money. I am not just taking the taxpayer's money and try to waste it and spend it ridiculously. All right, that's the, not even the subject matter here. At well, this he point. brought it up, and I just want to make sure it's clear because I'm not talking about using any taxpayer money on that baseball field. Okay. And that Can was we, clear at the meeting. Enough. Just one clarification. En that's enough. All. Please. Just one clarification, please. Look, it's I understand that. It's just one, 1030. <laughs> Mr. Prisco and we're talking it's, about something I, that's I a need, closed but I issue. Need to clarify something. Please let me clarify something. He mentioned just simply that I keep talking about the Benevento. I've only brought it up once, and that was tonight. So that's all. All right. On the motion, all in favor of removing Article 9, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Town Administrator's report. Uh, the, Mr. Chairman, do you uh, any other comments with regard to the warrant? Uh, I think we've got everything else in. I think that uh, we'll have a more detailed presentation either at the meeting on the 19th or perhaps at the warrant article hearing. As on soon as the uh, as soon as you have all the articles squid away from a language point of view, will you just put them in Dropbox and notify the board? Certainly. It looks like a one nighter, which is good. One night meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe yeah. half a night. Maybe half a night. Yeah. Town administrator's report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I apologize, but uh, a number of factors contributed to my not being able to file a written report. But I, again, as I indicated via email um, to the board, uh, and as was publicized on Thursday on the front page of the transcript, uh, we did have a mosquito uh, or mosquitoes that tested positive for West Nile virus uh, from a trap uh, in the vicinity of Maple Road. So we just urge residents to have uh, to, to use uh, vigilance in protecting themselves. This is the season uh, when uh, the, the, those uh, 
diseases become prevalent and the State Department of Public Health and our regional mosquito control project continue to monitor it. But again, we just urge vigilance with regard to it. Um, it, it is more and more common that we see West Nile virus uh, uh, show up in communities, but nonetheless, uh, we just remind folks to be uh, careful. Uh, the second thing that I just want to note is uh, it's you know, no secret that we're experiencing a regional drought and uh, our water department through Water Superintendent Mark Clark has been actively participating in the state conversations that have been taking place to update uh, officials from the Drought Management Task Force. Uh, and just one thing that I, I would uh, note at this point in time, uh, we generally would be engaging in seasonal hydrant flushing in the fall in uh, order to protect uh, water quality. Um, and uh, it's been the recommendation of the Water Department that based on the shortage that we um, forego hydrant flushing this fall. Um, I spoke uh, with Mark with regard to what the implications might be, and he, he had a reasonable level of comfort that they, because of, unfortunately, a couple of uh, main breaks that took place earlier in the summer, uh, there was quite a bit of flushing that, that occurred uh, essentially naturally uh, in, uh, in the areas that are generally most impacted by water quality issues. So he, he was reasonably comfortable that uh, we could do so uh, without having a huge impact on water quality. But uh, the situation certainly is concerning, uh, as has been publicized, <coughs> and uh, uh, I'm in support of, the, uh, of that plan, again, to forego flushing for this season. Uh, that did happen once before recently. I think it was four or five years ago that where, because of a shortage, we elected to forego the hydrant flushing. But uh, it would appear that that's the recommendation of the Water Department, and that's the direction we'll be going in. Why not just stretch it out? And, you know, I may... You know, instead of doing them all in, I don't know, two weeks or however they do it, just to, you know, thin it down and stretch it out through November. I, I think that the recommendation would have been to do something more limited this season, except that the, the notation that I, uh, I got from Mark was the areas where we've generally seen the highest prevalence of complaints regarding water quality. <laughs> because of the breaks, and we had a number of them back to back as the board saw mm -hmm. through the overtime yeah. sheets, so <coughs> three of them, they were in areas of town where we've generally been subject, subjected to that. And again, we're trying to, to follow some of the direction that we're receiving, you know, maybe not the in instruction or requirement, but direction we're getting from that job management task, task force. Well, you know, the other part of hydrant flushing that has some value is you're testing the hydrant, you know, so. Yeah. Make sure you can open it. Right. That's, that's been part of the problems. Over this here, is, so. I think, one of the only, you know, the place, the only time we find out we have a bad hydrant is during mm -hmm. flushing or when there's an emergency and we go to use it and it's broken. Uh, and so I, I'll talk the with thought, the water. It's all. I'll talk with the water superintendent regarding any provisions you might be able to institute to address that, whether it's just testing without you know, opening valves. Even if it's just a matter of going around and doing testing right. the hydrants by opening them and closing them. Without using a lot of water, Michael. I think Mr. Mr. O'Leary was first on. Huh. So I, I was just going to uh, inquire as to why we haven't gone to a different stage with all that's occurred, uh, what's occurring, and what continues to occur. Uh, we've imposed greater restrictions in past years than we have this year, and I, I don't know. Never mind, really just not threatening, but regionally. Um, why haven't we gone to a different stage? We, we did have that conversation as well, the, the water superintendent and I. And um, the consensus is that the, the system continues to perform at the, the means that it was performing in the early part of the summer and the means that it has traditionally uh, performed. I shouldn't say the early part, the middle part of the summer. And again, that's largely driven by the, the drop off in demand when most people's lawns uh, turned around and stopped growing, therefore the watering stopped. That, coupled with the timing of the bill having been issued uh, just a few weeks ago, which generally causes for a reduction in the use of water, as well as the drop-off that the Water Department traditionally sees in September, uh, when uh, a lot of the uh, outdoor recreational water use uh, drops off significantly, it was the opinion of the superintendent that the system continues to function at a level that's, uh, that's acceptable, uh, and therefore not to make such a recommendation. Uh, with a big caveat that it's something that's being monitored on an ongoing basis. The, the task force at the state level, I think, believe meets weekly, provides updates, um, and, and we'll continue to participate in that. Yeah, but it just, was to, just to follow up, but other surrounding communities have far greater restrictions than we do, and I'm thinking more of a regional thing rather than you know, our system's working, which is good to hear in the 
levels of maintaining and so from a fire safety standpoint it works but from a regional standpoint um, I don't know that we're, we're towing the mark here and carrying our weight our load as far as uh, the impact uh, on the region where I had to just go one, one town over keep going um, total bans outside water bans I, I think so Steve, perhaps so the, I, I think uh, we're not we're not assisting in the effort uh, like other communities are well, perhaps our citizens are cutting back on the water. Well, they certainly have. And as a result, we haven't had the issue. I mean, the issue comes up when when our water tanks start to drop yeah, below but that, that's parochial. a certain level and we can't replenish it. Yeah, but that's parochial. That, that's, you know, so far our systems are replenishing themselves and keeping it at a safe level. But that doesn't negate the fact that regionally, it's one of the worst droughts we've ever experienced and, and uh, we're not doing the same to assist in the recharging of the of the resource that other area communities are. Okay, I get it. Mr. Yule. Yeah. Um, you know, I had noticed that some of the towns in our surrounding area also have uh, water restrictions. I didn't notice the levels if they were more strict than ours or not. But what I what I did notice, um, and I, I'll preface my comment with I'm under the impression that if when we, or if we, assuming we move over to MWRA water, we will not have the water issues that we're having now. Okay, that, that the water supply by the MWRA is plentiful and that um, it, it wouldn't be an issue for us. But then I was in Wilmington, who was under the MWRA, and they have a water ban. And it just made me wonder uh, about the, the big project that we're getting, we're about to enter into, uh, made me think about Andover and so on, um, that if we're going to do all this and still have to go through the same water bans, what are we really accomplishing? So, you know, um, it's not, this is kind of an offshoot of what you were talking about, and I apologize for that, but it's just something that's been coming to my thoughts, that um, um, going to the MWRA is supposed to improve our situation, and if it's not, then we have to think about that. Well, certainly got to improve the Ipswich River watershed because we're going to be taking money from wa water from Quabbin and putting it right. in the river. Well, we're, we're, <laughs> past, we're past the peak. We're starting yeah. to get a little bit of rain. I can tell because yeah. my lawn that was yellow, wherever there is still grass, it's green. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think we should have talked about this back uh, in the middle of July. Yes, Michael. Jeff, you, you said Wilmington, right? Yeah. Wilmington has their own wells and they use a sub small portion of some MWRA okay. water. They don't get all their water from MWRA. Right. Matter of fact, this year they've actually slowed down in their wells and they're taking more from MWRA than ever okay. because of this. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Um, I made a reference to this earlier uh, when Senator Tarr was here, but uh, with the assistance of Danielle McKnight, the town planner, and um, Wright Pierce, we did submit a, uh, an application to the state's MassWorks program. It's an infrastructure funding program for uh, just over $2.5 million worth of assistance. Um, this would be funding that would essentially cover the cost of the um, construction of the pump station associated with the MWRA project. Uh, the project, uh, the goal of the MassWorks program is to generate economic development, and um, they, they prefer to see a specific project identified uh, with a specific developer. Uh, we don't necessarily have that um, in place right now, but uh, knowing that we're going through the process relative to the JT Berry property, and knowing that uh, that um, there is additional funding that was approved at the state level for the MassWorks program, we put the application in as a standpoint to. Uh, secure our, our place on the list as a need. Um, certainly Secretary Ash is aware of the, the, the need and uh, uh, we had um, the benefit of support both from Senator Tarr and from Representative Brad Jones who provided letters of support of, for our application uh, as well as support from the Town of Reading uh, for the application. 
uh, and the town of Middleton, which actually supported it. And that gives us some more points in the process. And they essentially supported it on the basis that um, it would reduce the stress on the Ipswich River for their purposes down the road. So um, I believe that through the effort that went in over the three or four week period in August, we have a, as strong an application as we could put forth um, within the program. And uh, we, we await to hear a response, if not during the current funding round, then perhaps at a future one later on this fiscal year. I know that's something that we spoke about with the town meeting, and I just wanted to make the board aware of it, make the community aware of it. Um, with regard to uh, road repair work, I just want to provide a, a quick update regarding the, the status of the schedule. Uh, the major projects that we have to do, which are um, hot in place recycling materials, uh, are Havel Street from the Ipswich River Bridge south to the town of uh, Reading Line. Uh, Central Street from North Street to the Andover Line and Chestnut Street from Haverhill to Flint Streets. We're looking at having that done the last week of September with a contractor to confirm a date uh, for mobilization with us. And we would then move to raise the, uh, the castings the following week. And uh, in uh, honor about the second or third week of October, we would have the final course of payment uh, put in place. So again, uh, we, we had said it would be in September. That we will start in September, although probably not till late September. The microsurfacing project, which was a different type of approach done on some, uh, some uh, other streets, including Spruce Road, Heritage Way, and Ashwood Drive, was completed earlier this summer. Um, so we are making some progress there. We will be doing uh, quite a bit of crack sealing at the very end of October. Uh, we will certainly notify the public, particularly with the major projects on Haverhill, uh, Central, and to some extent Central uh, Chestnut Street. Uh, we'll certainly notify the public of the construction that will be going on there. And the final thing uh, to note, uh, not, not to turn the conversation back to the matter, but I, I was contacted by Representative Jones' office regarding uh, a grant that's been put in the state budget to, um, to the town, the town of North Reading, for uh, improvements uh, at Benevento Field. Uh, it's a child, uh, state child enhancement grant that was uh, authorized by the legislature in the amount of $50,000 vetoed by the governor, overridden by the uh, legislature. Uh, he, uh, Representative Jones has encouraged me to send a letter to uh, the appropriate secretariat and state government to encourage the release of that funds uh, for a project uh, that would involve improvements at Benevento Field done in conjunction with uh, the Little League. And so I'm intending to proceed with regard to that. Um, we'll be ha having a coordinating meeting to determine the extent of the exact work with the League and with Parks and Recreation so that we can have a plan finalized. And that concludes my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions for the TA? <coughs> Mr. O'Leary? I don't have any notes. Oh, all the new business. business. No, I, I, the only thing I wanted to comment again on was Gene Torek, and what a great employee and a tremendous man. And uh, gonna be sorely missed. And again, the outpouring of support from uh, his colleagues and fellow workers was, was heartening to to uh, to witness and uh, very untimely and uh, a true loss to the community. So, thank you. Mr. Yule. Uh, yes, uh, two things, uh, both sad. Um, uh, still thinking about 9-11 uh, and those who have uh, passed, passed away and those who have gone through uh, difficult times for the past about 15 years, um, so you know my heart goes out to all of you. And again with uh, Jean uh, Turek, um, he, n no one so quiet of a personality and another person ever spoke so loudly just by being himself. Um, he was a wonderful person, a sincere person, uh, the kind of person that uh, you could never have a negative thing to say about. And uh, I'm happy to have had the luxury of knowing him for the little times that I have had. So. Um, we did lose a, a wonderful person who was like a Motel 6. Motel six. He had the light on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and he was always there, and he was always reliable, and, and you could always count on him. So 
Uh, he's going to be missed. Thank you. Catherine. Of course, I, I want to echo the same sentiments, and I, I did not know him as well as all of you did, but in the time that I did get to know him, he was just a very gentle person, a very kind person. And I am also, I was also, um, I thought it was wonderful to see the, the, our personnel, our town personnel, supportive of one another, and this, it's a hard thing for the personnel to deal with such a loss of somebody that was still here full time and gone so suddenly. So I think that that was um, really encouraging to see those people encouraging one another and supporting one another. And then the other thing I wanted to just mention, because school's going on back in full swing, is just for people to watch out for the buses and pay attention to the rules of the road and be careful because kids are walking and biking and all over the place and slow down in the morning. You'll get where you need to go. Just take your time so you're not endangering people's safety. I really would like to uh, pass along my condolences to Gene and his family and all the employees here. I was really sad that I couldn't make the services. I had a pre-scheduled business trip that I could not get out of. Uh, I got back on Sunday, and so unfortunately I missed it all. But, um, you know, I think if we have an opportunity that comes along and we have a conference room or even the IT room that we want to name after Gene, I think that would be a nice gesture for us to consider in the future. I think we should do that. He's been here such a long time. Um, and for him, you know, to leave Town Hall the way, you know, in the manner that he went, I think we should at least consider it uh, to have something here that would be a tribute to him to, for when we're all not here, but his name will be here on a wall somewhere. I think we should find a way to find a tribute for him. And he certainly has earned that, and uh, he will certainly be missed. What I learned in all of this is that I met Gene back in somewhere around 2001, the 2002 frame, before I was on the board <coughs> as a member of the uh, town's IT committee. And uh, at the time, he was a consultant. And through all this time I've known him, right, I really didn't know him. From the point of view that he's a gentleman, and any conversation I ever had with him was on the technical side. We never talked about his family, and so on and so forth. But what I found out from our employees who took his loss very, very uh, significantly, uh, that he communicated with them. He told them about his life of growing up in Nebraska. And uh, he talked about his family, and they talked during the wake about him. You know, we met his family, by the way. They, they came from Nebraska here, and uh, uh, it, the comments they made to me about how the town employees treated them and you know, made him part of this whole community for the couple of days they were here, right? It was just phenomenal. But what I learned was that, you know, he, he, there was a communication. People did know a lot about his life. And then, you know, he told stories like, you know, he'd go visit his family and he'd take a day trip, you know, get on an airplane, go to Nebraska and come back <laughs> because he was so dedicated here. I mean, you know, how many days have you left a board meeting and looked outside when he used to park out here and see his car there still? Right. You know, so it's, it's sad, and I certainly will miss him. And uh, he certainly was a gentleman. But I, I'd like to also acknowledge, you know, the efforts of uh, Liz and Bill uh, Warnock in terms of getting things set up because his family had to get here. And things had to be had to be done, and they couldn't do all of it remotely. And uh, and then all the town employees who all contributed to make you know, saying goodbye to him something that was very special. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Do we hear a second. 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 Steve. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed?
unanimous.